This broadcast of ICC Athletics is being brought to you by Renaissance Bank, Little Caesars, Davis Ford, The Sonic of Fulton, Tupelo Coca-Cola Bottling Works, the Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi, First American National Bank, the ICC BSU, your Itawama County Farm Bureau agent, Joey Cox, Kegel Eye Center, the ICC Foundation, the Bank of Oklahoma, and the ICC Alumni Association. Ever since you got that license, you haven't stopped moving forward. Now that you're older and on the move, you need a safer place to keep your money. We get it. A student checking account frees you up with things like mobile check deposit to take care of that check from grandma without having to stop at a bank. Pay with your phone when you're out with friends. And stop worrying about ATM fees. We'll pay you back for those. Worry about your future, not your money. And know that we'll stick with you wherever you go. Renaissance Bank. Understanding you. Member FDIC. Everyone has a unique story to tell. Maybe your story has you performing your new song in front of a crowd, getting to play your favorite sport, or enjoying a horseback ride in the country. At Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi, our group of skilled surgeons understand your need to continue your story. That is why we are the preferred choice for orthopedic care. Thank you for choosing us. Our story is you. Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi. Davis Ford in Fulton is your Ford dealer for new cars, trucks, and SUVs and has a wide inventory of certified pre-owned vehicles. Find your next dream car or truck from our Ford showroom or go online to davisfordsales.com and search our new and used inventory to see what is on our lot. So stop by and test drive the all-new fuel-efficient Ford Focus or Ford Fusion or the new Ford Explorer or F-150. Go further with Davis Ford, 904 West Main Street in Fulton or online davisfordsales.com. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, out to Boonville, Mississippi, where tonight ICC and Northeast are set to square off as both teams restart division play in 2020. I'm Adam Gore. I'll be joined shortly by Jordan Smith as we're getting set for the First American National Bank opening tip-off here, part of the Davis Ford pregame show coming, you, coming to you from Northeast. Let's take you to the floor now for the playing of the National Anthem and the introduction of tonight's Coca-Cola starting lineups. Mustard. Ketchup and mustard. 
Grass-fed beef. No, corn-fed. On the grill. Now, nah, flat top. Iceberg lettuce. Nah, arugula. Jalapeno. No way. Avocado, dude. Medium rare. Gotta be all done. Rio. Sesame seeds. American cheese. Cheddar. Can I have a turkey burger? What? Turkeys are for Thanksgiving, man. I like my burger with the Coke. I'll agree to that. Strictly with the Coke. Only with the Coke. Coke and a burger. Come on. All right. That's where you get the flavor. At Itawamba Community College, your education is our top priority. With a 20 to 1 student to teacher ratio, you will get the help that you need from your instructors. With three locations in Fulton, Tupelo, and Belden, ICC offers classes that will prepare you to enter almost any job field of your choice. Learn more about Wallet Hub's number one community college in Mississippi and the 25th best in the country by visiting iccms.edu or apply online at apply.iccms.edu. Itawamba Community College, the best start here. This broadcast of ICC Athletics is being brought to you by Renaissance Bank, Little Caesars, Davis Ford, The Sonic of Fulton, Tupelo Coca-Cola Bottling Works, The Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi, First American National Bank, The ICC BSU, Your Itawama County Farm Bureau Agent, Joey Cox, Kegel Eye Center, The ICC Foundation, The Bank of Oklahoma, and The ICC Alumni Association. Davis Ford in Fulton is your Ford dealer for new cars, trucks, and SUVs and has a wide inventory of certified pre-owned vehicles. Find your next dream car or truck from our Ford showroom or go online to davisfordsales.com and search our new and used inventory to see what is on our lot. So stop by and test drive the all new fuel efficient Ford Focus or Ford Fusion or the new Ford Explorer or F-150. Go further with Davis Ford, 904 West Main Street in Fulton or online davisfordsales.com. First American National Bank is a local bank. Our 10 locations are right here in Northeast Mississippi. Banking decisions are made locally by people who live here. It's been that way for more than 50 years. Our involvement in the community is important to us. That's where our roots are. Technology, it changes daily, but our community is what keeps us together. If you like high tech banking, we've got that too. Follow the flag to First American National Bank from Iuka to Tupelo. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, as we're just moments away from that First American National Bank opening tip between ICC and Northeast, the first of two games this evening here on the ICC Sports Network. We do appreciate everyone that's tuning in here this after, or should, excuse me, should say this evening. Very slim crowd this evening as a lot of the uh, high school basketball games got moved to tonight due to some of the weather concerns uh, later on in this weekend. ICC controls the First American National Bank opening tip, and it's going to be Tabria Gandy with the basketball. She drives inside. She's hammered and foul. Let's take a look at tonight's Coca-Cola starting lineups, and let's start with the Northeast Lady Tigers. They come in with a record of 2-9, and 1-0 oh in the north. It's number 10, Takira Newsom. Number 11, Dominique Caldwell. Number 12, Ch Chancey Jackson. Number 30, Haley Vick. And number 32, that is Deshae Gloucester. That foul was listed on Caldwell, her first foul. And now for your Coca-Cola starting lineups here for ICC. ICC and Coke, now that's a winning combination. And Coach Robin Porter hopes she's got that winning combo put together tonight as that second free throw is up in and good for ICC's Tabria Gandy, who goes one for two from the line. So here's your starting lineups here for ICC as we've got a foul away from the basketball. It's going to be number four, Whitney Watkins. Number five, Ziri Burgess. Number 11, Tabria Gandy. Number 22, Sarah Freelo. And she does pick up the foul at midcourt. Number 23 is Keely Wilson. So again, those starting lineups, Watkins, Burgess, Gandy, Freelo, and Wilson for ICC. ICC is in their road gray. Northeast is in their home black trimmed in gold. ICC, as usual, trimmed in red and blue. So Tigers with the basketball. They trail it one to nothing here early on in the contest. Drive to the basket, layup is up in and good. Nice drive to the basket that time. That was Newsom. Newsom with the basket for the Tigers. 2-1 now is the score. They actually have it one. There it is. Now they get it 2-1. Northeast with the lead. This is now Wilson with the basketball. She's looking to drive inside. Floater in the paint. Bouncing around. No good. Offensive rebound. Put back is up. No good. But there's another foul on the Tigers. So we'll have a pair of free throws coming up here for ICC. That foul is going to be whistled on Jackson. Her first foul. Team second foul. 
We'll be joined by Jordan Smith momentarily. He was uh, caught up in traffic. There was a little construction going on uh, between Tupelo and South Tillo, and so he will be joining us here momentarily in the ICC Alumni Affairs and Foundation broadcast booth. Reminds you that if you want to contribute to Itawamba Community College, you can do so by visiting iccms.edu slash foundation. That's iccms.edu slash foundation. Second free throw for Burgess is up in and good. 2-2 Two -two now is the score between ICC and Northeast. Tigers with the basketball, quickly breaking the press. Nice bounce pass, but good job hustling back defensively that time. Woods Burgess to slap the ball away. And now we'll force the ball on the baseline here for the Tigers and allow the Indians defense to reset. 2-2 Two -two is your score. Two, excuse me, 9 2 to go here in the first of four quarters. Spinning around quickly around the perimeter. Left-handed jumper up in and good. Nothing but the bottom of the net that time for Dominique Caldwell. And she gives the Tigers a 4-2 lead. Largely the night now for the Tigers at 2 with 8.45 to play here in the first quarter. Freelo with the basketball. Gives it off to Wilson. Wilson stops. Jumps and drills the jumper. Nicely done that time by Keely Wilson. First basket, our first field goal of the contest for ICC, I should say, as it ties us at four. Quickly down the other end, that jumper's off the mark, no good. Tigers, nice job crashing the boards. Put back is up in and good. So Newsom leading all scores now with four points in the Tigers. Every time ICC gets something going, they've had a pretty good answer on the offensive end on the other end. Gandy, long jumper off the mark, no good. Freelo there for the rebound. Kicks it out, long three, it's short, no good. Freelo had the rebound, tips it out, and ICC controls. So eight minutes to play here, Northeast with a six to four lead. Gandy with the basketball, crosses over the defender. Good help defense that time. Gandy loses the dribble, drops it off to Wilson now at the point. Five seconds on the shot clock. Wilson going to have to hurry. Drives inside. Floaters up and good. Big basket there for Keeley Wilson. Impressive. Kiss off the glass for the basket. Ties us at six. Tries to throw over top of the press just high enough that ICC couldn't pick that pass off in Northeast. Dodges a turnover there. Inside they go, driving, shots long, no good. Offensive rebound put up, no good. And there's Burgess cleaning the boards. 6-6 six, six is your score. 7.20 to go here in the first quarter. Drops it off, free low. Kiss off the glass, no good. The iron unkind that time for free low. Mad scramble for the basketball. And Northeast able to come away with it. Seven minutes and five seconds to go here in the first quarter. Both teams getting set to send in some substitutions here. 6-6 six, six is your score. Adam Gore, Jordan Smith be joining us here momentarily. Lee Adams on the sideline taking his photos. You can see those images at iccimages.com. Raphael Henry up top running the camera for us here as well. Northeast with the basketball being very patient now, working with five seconds on the shot clock. Kicks it out, thought about the three. Now it's going to have to hurry two seconds, and that's going to be a shot clock violation. Good job defensively that time by ICC as we'll have our first substitutions of the evening coming to the game here for ICC as well as Northeast. So they'll counter with a pair of subs as well. These substitutions being brought to you by the ICC Baptist Student Union. Remember, ICC students, once the school year starts, they meet Monday nights at 7.07. Wednesdays for the ICC BSU lunch, luncheon, obviously at lunch, all they ask is bring $2 and a friend. That's the ICC BSU. Here's your substitutions for IC, ICC. Shamaya Williams into the contest, wearing number 20. Number 24 is Mariah Holland. And there's a turnover by ICC. Northeast gets it back. For Northeast, it was 25, Kathy Burst, Burst, excuse me, and number 31, Quintanya Webster. So ICC turns it over. The Northeast turns it over on the other end. Back and forth. Anything you can do, I can do better here. Gandy drives inside, stops, now goes inside, and she's going to be fouled. That foul is going to be whistled on number 32. That's going to be McGloster, her first foul, team third foul. I've got to get used to the scoreboards. I keep continuing to look up like I do at ICC, but they're at the baselines of each. 6.05 to go here. This is Gandy at the free throw line. Her first free throw is good. She's two from three from the charity stripe this evening. She's got two points. ICC retakes the lead now at one. That matches, or excuse me, no, two has been their largest lead of the night. Second free throw, that one good. And that's what I was thinking ahead of myself as ICC matches their largest lead of the night at two. Six minutes and three seconds to go here. ICC Northeast in a classic battle 
as both teams reopening division play here in 2020. ICC comes in with an 8-2 record, 1-0 in the North. Northeast, 2-9, 0-1 in the North as well. That ball slapped out of bounds. It will stay with the Tigers. 16 seconds on the shot clock. As Tigers with it, trying to go for the backside. It was guarded nicely that time, and ICC steals the inbounds pass. Williams with it, trying to look up the floor, but then it was slapped away as ICC gets it, or excuse me, Northeast gets it back now. Eight to six is your score. We're now being joined by Jordan Smith in the ICC Alumni Affairs and Foundation broadcast booth. Running a little bit of traffic on the way here, but Jordan, glad to have you. Well, appreciate it, Adam, as we step in, and Northeast bangs one off the backboard. It looks like the Indians Early lead here to big rivalry matchup in mid-January. Eight to six is a score. Five twenty to play here in the first quarter. ICC in their road grays. Sometimes wear those at home. And Northeast wearing their home black jerseys trimmed in gold. So this is Wilson with the basketball. That's going to be a moving screen there on Holland. Her first foul, team second foul. Three fouls have been called against Northeast, two against ICC, and really and truly, neither one of these teams right now kind of finding their rhythm here early on as that ball just thrown out of bounds. She quickly zipped it across trying to get to uh, get before ICC could shift over with their trap, but really wasn't paying attention to the basketball, so he got the turnover either way. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's been one of the things ICC has been really good at all year long is, is forcing turnovers on the defensive end, translating that into baskets on the offensive side as Gandy takes over the point guard spot. So Gandy with the basketball now, looking to work off a screen, switched off on nicely, quick three-pointer put up. It's short, no good, and the rebound to Northeast. Well, Northeast has done a good job after ICC had a couple of early offensive rebounds, keeping ICC off the boards. And that time, the Tigers just could not find the handle of the basketball. It's almost like it just didn't want to bounce back up to her that time. Yeah, not a great pass, but it was definitely a catch ball by Deshae McGloster going up the far sideline over there and just kind of bounces one too many times, rolls out of bounds, and an easy turnover gets the basketball back in the hands of the Indians. Substitution in the game here being brought to you by the Bank of Oklahoma. Visit bankofoklahoma.com. This is number 14, Tatiana Normant for ICC. So ICC playing eight deep so far here early on in the contest. Neither team really lining it up early as ICC leads at eight to six. Williams with the basketball. The southpaw looking to go to work. Spins. Good defense by Northeast to force her to reset. Wilson puts up the jumper. It's off the mark, and there's Normant with an offensive rebound. Normant driving baseline, and she's fouled. That's the fourth foul of the first quarter against the Tigers. So four fouls, Tigers, two fouls for the Indians. 8-6 lead, ICC on top with 4.15 to go. But you would expect to see ICC to try to get that ball down low a little more than they have here in the last couple of minutes, Adam, as they're struggling from beyond the perimeter. Well, that might be why they just checked in Lamaya Pfeiffer into the contest, wearing number 30. Rebound being tipped around, and Northeast eventually finds it. Neither team lighting it up from the floor, as you said, Jordan. Lamaya Pfeiffer into the contest for ICC. That substitution being brought to you by First American National Bank. And I tell you what, the pace that the referees are calling fouls now, it uh, might be midnight before this game's over with. Telling you, that's Normant and Keely Wilson who have the ball trapped right near the half-court line. So, essentially, uh, they got the, the half-court line working in their favor. They got two girls also having the basketball trapped, and a touch foul goes against the Indians. Coach Porter trying to find a five on the floor that could work and get some offense going here. Overton wearing number 12 checks into the contest for ICC. Eight to six is the score. Step back, long two-pointers off the mark, no good. And there's Gandy with the rebound. Gandy looking to get out and run. Surveys what she had, didn't have anything. Then puts the foot back on the gas, drives inside. Kiss off the glass, bouncing around and good. And that's where Tabria Gandy is at her best. Get the basketball out and transition off a bad shot by Northeast. Take it coast to coast to get it to that eight-foot range and use the glass to get the bucket. That's how she does such a good job as the point guard, driving the ship right there after the defensive miscue. She's got four points, largely the night for ICC now is four. It's 10 to six, 324 to play here in the first. Nice job that time though, being patient. And that's Newson with it. She leads all scores now with six. Good job getting that ball down in the low post. And once you get that basketball into that spot, all you really have to do is put it off that glass. And that's what she did there. And so it's going to be a kickball call there on Northeast. Northeast kind of jump surprise on the trap there. 10 to 8 is the score. 3-11 to play here. Normant with the basketball. She's going to give it right back to Gandy, who traditionally runs that point guard position here for ICC all, seasons, all season long. Well, Jordan, we didn't get a chance to talk about it in the pregame show, but let's talk about it now as Gandy drives inside. Her shot blocked. 
a light whistle, probably one of those he wished he didn't call it, like a pretty clean block there. But let's talk about it. Let's put the coaching shoes on you. What does ICC got to do tonight to be successful to come away with this win over the rivals? Well, I think we've noticed – in the last couple of minutes here, I would say since about the five-minute mark, that the key for ICC is going to be to get the ball down low. Uh, they've settled too often for these three-point baskets. At the, at, you look at the stat sheet, they shoot 25% from the three-point line. Got to get that ball down to that low block. You've got a size advantage down low. Need to use that glass and really attack inside. ICC also needs to start taking advantage of these free-throw opportunities as they're three for six so far here in the first quarter, and they do make that one five points now for Gandhi. 11 to 6, or excuse me, 11 to 8 is the score. Inside three minutes of play now here in the third quarter. Ball being passed around quickly. Jumpers off the mark, no good. Rebound, could have been over the back call, no call that time. But a good job finishing around the basket that time by Burst. ICC got out of position on the defensive end. The center, Lamaya Pfeiffer, had to come out to close on the shot. That allowed Northeast to really attack the basket, get the offensive rebound. Beautiful pass there from Normant to Pfeiffer. Pfeiffer gets the first basket of the evening there, and ICC's lead back to three, 13 to 10. Northeast not wasting any time getting down the floor, and a good call that time by the referee as Williams trying to get position that time, just wasn't there in enough time in a blocking foul. Well, she's thinking the right thing there. As you can tell that you got someone coming downhill out of control, but was not able to slide those feet over and get set to take that charge. That's an easy block call against the Indians. Nine total fouls have been called so far here in the first quarter of play, and we still got 2.22 to go here. Northeast with the basketball on the baseline. ICC with a 13 to 10 lead. The ball slapped out of bounds, nearly ran into Coach Porter that time. As we do get another substitution into the game here. This is going to be number 13, Tamoya Brownlee, into the contest. So ICC has played 11 so far here in the first quarter. Jumper from the keys off the mark, no good. Rebound's going to be chased down by Overton. Overton going to try to push, go coast to coast, and that's going to be a reach-in foul. And that one's going to be whistled there on Caldwell. That's not a bad foul, though, if you're Caldwell. As ICC has numbers out in transition, foul where there's not a shooting foul, so it'll be one and one here with the fifth foul of the first quarter. So smart play there. Don't give up the easy layup. Get the foul. Make him go to the free throw line to beat you. Well, ICC, four of 70, so, excuse me, 70. I hope we don't get there tonight. That'd four of seven tonight in the first quarter from the free throw line. That free throw, no good. And, you know, that's one of the biggest places for improvement with this basketball team. Coming into the night, only 61% off the free throw line. We'd like to see that number get up, get up a lot closer to that 70% mark. But starting out four of eight tonight is not going to help you get there. So winning this second free throw opportunity here for Overton, trying to push the lead out to four, matching the largest lead of the night here. She can make it. Free throw is up and good. Nice adjustment that time by Overton. Able to get that one and just smooth as silk. Knocks that one down for her first point of the evening. We'll see ICC go back into that press off the made free throw. It's like a 1-2-2 two, two full court zone. So ICC trying to cause some problems here. Northeast has handled it pretty well so far this evening. Being very patient. As the three-point basket is up in and good. That was number 20. That was Atterbury with the basket. Layup's no good. Offensive rebound for Pfeiffer, and she gets it in there. You know, I was having some fun with some stat work today, Adam, and I looked, Lamaya Pfeiffer is shooting over 80% on the year. That's why she attacks the offensive boards, is able to put back just like she did right there. Good job off the bench by Lamaya Pfeiffer. Back-to-back -back threes by Atterbury, and that was a big one there. ICC did not shift over defensively. We're tied now at 16, and then I, excuse me, yeah, ICC turns it over. That's a terrible, terrible transition right there. It's a made three-point basket. Kind of gets you down a little bit. Then on offense, you have to look to break the press. And Keely Wilson absolutely threw it over the head of her own girl, throws it out of bounds, and gives Northeast the basketball right back. Yeah, as a sophomore, you got to be a little bit better than that. And right now, she's coming up and skinning the defense. Got to be careful. Don't want to commit that foul. So Northeast with the basketball. Back-to-back -back threes has tied the contest at 16. 105 to play here. Turnaround jumper is up in and good. Just enough on that one to get that one in that time for Newsom. A good job by Pfeiffer, though. She holds her ground, hands straight up, doesn't foul, does all you can do in that situation. It's even better play on offense by the Lady Tigers. Inside a minute to play now. ICC trails at 18-6. to six. They led as much as four here in the quarter. Pfeiffer, turnaround jumper, up in and good. Nothing but the bottom of the net there for Pfeiffer. I'm telling you, over 80% clip on the year through 10 games, and they're not all put back layups. 
I mean, that was 15 feet out off the elbow, and she rattles it home. Reverse layup, and a beautiful play there. Quick as a hiccup was Webster, as she got to the basket and a good job finishing. And now business starting to pick up offensively for both teams. 20 to 18 now. Tigers with the lead, ICC with the basketball. And the shot clock is turned off in this situation, so ICC can hold off for the final shot of the quarter. This is Wilson with the basketball, working with eight seconds now. Trying to work one-on-one, -on -one. drives in, picks up her dribble, in trouble, out to Normant. Normant with three seconds, puts the jumper up, no good. Offensive rebound, put back, no good. My goodness, Coach Porter wanting the foul call there, and as many whistles we had in the first quarter, surprised we didn't get one there. Yeah, they did everything from a scheme standpoint right. Right there, they attacked the basket with about five seconds left, gave the team enough time to get the offensive rebound and put one back. Don't know how you don't get that foul call there, though that hurts. Going into, the, going into the first quarter break. 20 to 18, Northeast with the lead. We'll take a break and be back with more right after this on the ICC Sports Network. The longer a person has diabetes, the more likely they are to develop diabetic retinopathy. If left untreated, diabetic retinopathy can lead to blindness. That's why it's important for diabetics to have a comprehensive eye examination with dilation once a year. I'm Dr. Laurie Cagle of Cagle Eye Center in Fulton. We offer comprehensive eye exams to provide diagnosis and treatment of various eye diseases. Browse our large selection of frames available in prescription and non-prescription. Call to schedule your appointment today at Cagle Eye Center in Fulton. At Itawamba Community College, your education is our top priority. With a 20 to 1 student to teacher ratio, you will get the help that you need from your instructors. With three locations in Fulton, Tupelo, and Belden, ICC offers classes that will prepare you to enter almost any job field of your choice. Learn more about Wallet Hub's number one community college in Mississippi and the 25th best in the country by visiting iccms.edu or apply online at apply.iccms.edu. Itawama Community College, the best start here. And welcome back to action, ladies and gentlemen. As we get set for the second quarter of play here. ICC trailing at 20 to 18 after back-to-back -back three pointers and a pretty strong offensive surge by Northeast to finish the first quarter of play. Now the first couple of minutes of this second quarter are key, Adam. It felt like ICC had the momentum for the most part of the first quarter, but that last two minutes was much more kind to Northeast. So the Tigers with the basketball, they try to feed it inside, do so. Turn around jumper, up in and good. That was Jackson with the basket, her first points of the evening. A nice offensive set there for the Tigers. Now they take their largest lead of the night, largest lead of the night at 4, 22 to 18. Wilson drives inside, wild shot, no good. Great job blocking out underneath that time by Northeast. Got to take a better shot That's than that. That's just not what you're looking for that early into the shot clock. And no pass, drive down, throw up a 10-foot shot and double coverage. That's just not what you're looking for in an offensive set. Tigers with the basketball go inside and attacking the basket. And that's Newsom's 10th point of the night. And now the lead out to six for the Tigers. Largest of the night. Newsom averages 14 and a half per game. She's got 10 through the first 11 minutes tonight as ICC's really struggling on the interior right there in the paint of the defense for this right now. Well, ICC all out of sorts offensively. That's Wilson with the basketball. Drops it back up top now. This is Gandy working with eight seconds, trying to work off the screen. That's an offensive foul. All day, every day there as Burgess came in and tripped, looked like, and just came in and tried to keep her balance and pushed off on the player there. So we'll have another substitution coming in. Mar Mariah Holland back into the contest. This substitution being brought to you by the Bank of Oklahoma. ICC going to go back to that full court. Press. They're going to try to take away a possession from Northeast. Had some success with it in the first quarter. But Northeast has been able to, uh, to break that press consistently here lately and get easy layups because of it. Well, Holland that time steps in front of the press and takes it away, and then we're going to have a reach-in foul. Whistled here on the Tigers in transition. That was going to be whistled on Atterbury, her first foul, team first foul here in the second quarter. Each team with one foul so far in the second. 24-18 to 18 is your score, 826 to play here. In the contest, Tigers with the lead over your home, or excuse me, not home standing, but you're visiting Lady Indians here in Boonville. I see wearing those gray jerseys tonight kind of makes it look like they'd be a home game, so it's kind of difficult to see as Northeast wearing the black at home, pretty unusual. And we've got a foul on the rebound. That's going to be on Gandy. Or actually, they're going to call that one on Holland. Gandy upset that the foul was called. She thought she got hit pretty hard that time on the shot as we're going to have a substitution in, and this is going to be on Pfeiffer 
And Pfeiffer, or excuse me, Pfeiffer into the contest. Holland, who just picked up her second foul, will check out. So eight minutes, 10 seconds to go in the half, and Mariah Holland probably done for the first half. It's foul trouble. Lots of fouls early on. Whistle has been whistled, like blown, I guess I could say, pretty yeah. frequently early on tonight. Northeast with the basketball. 24-18 is their lead. Turnover, and ICC gets it back. Watkins begging for the basketball on the other end of the floor. Just couldn't quite get it to her in time. Now driving baseline, and she's going to be bumped. Well, if we play more than 30 seconds without a whistle, you're kind of surprised, Jordan. I'm telling you, lots of foul calls both ways. That's two apiece already on each team here in the second quarter. Only two minutes and 10 seconds in as Whitney Watkins draws the foul there. Didn't see her down the stretch much in the first quarter. Now she's back in there, leading score for the Lady Indians at 12 and a half points per game. Pfeiffer with the basketball, sends it back up top to the point guard, Gandy. Gandy. Going to dribble it back up and reset. Sends it over now to Wilson. Wilson wanting to work one-on-one. -on -one. Quick jab step. Goes inside. Had her shot blocked. Out of bounds will stay with ICC. Nice athletic move that time by McGloster. McGloster has two possessions in a row down the floor where we've seen Wilson get right there to that left side block. And McGloster has won the one-on-one -on -one battle. Blocked a shot and forced a terrible shot on the last possession. Watkins eyes, tries, buys the three-point basket. Boy, the Lady Indians needed that one. That's a big bucket there. Cuts the lead in half for Northeast. 24-21, 7.30 to go. And ICC forces a turnover and gets it right back. Now Watkins again. Yes, Watkins. Big basket there. Back-to-back -back jacks out of Whitney Watkins. And ICC's tied it at 24 with 7.15 to play. And that's what the press defense can do for you. You can get you that possession in a hurry. It can force that turnover. And in a, over a course of 15 seconds, a six-point lead goes to zero. And just like that, uh, we got a good little rhythm going there. And a whistle blown. And that one's going to be the second foul there on Burgess. This is going to send Williams into the contest. Burgess will have to come out with 7.09 to play here until halftime. Three fouls on ICC, two fouls here on Northeast so far in the contest. Now, we're not complaining about the foul differential in the game. We're just complaining about the uh, frequency of the whistles. A jumper off the mark, no good. Offensive rebound, put back is there. as a big basket there. Great job by Jackson getting physical, getting her fourth point of the contest. Got to do a better job blocking out if you're Lamaya Pfeiffer down there. You're in position and you just kind of get moved out of the way and it allows for an easy layup for the Tigers. Watkins answers with an easy layup of her own. Watkins all of a sudden turning into a scoring machine here. She's scored eight straight for the Lady Indians. That's what you want to see out of a sophomore leader, though, like Whitney Watkins. You want to see somebody in a game, a rivalry game that you're trailing in, take over and put some points on the board, get you back into a game. Inside they go with it. Nice feed. The shot is up and a friendly roll that time. As Jackson in Fuego this quarter, we talk about the hot shooting of Whitney Watkins. Jackson has six points in all six of those coming here in the second quarter. 28-26, ICC trailing, 6.15 to play. Williams, southpaw, jumper is off the mark, no good. Got to attack the basket there. Got to attack the basket. Two on one there, one more dribble. That's going to be an easy bounce pass underneath the goal to Lamaya Pfeiffer. Instead, she pulls up. So Tigers with the basketball, loose on the floor now. Williams tries to get to it. It's slapped loose, and that's going to be Wilson with it. Wilson tries to go inside, and she's hammered. And a good hustle that time by Williams. It's, she turned with sign of a somersault to be able to get that ball loose, and ICC on the other end now shooting free throws. Yeah, good opportunity for ICC right here as the game slows down, 5.54 to go. Hit two free throws, tie this thing back up. You know, defensively, there's been a couple of breakdowns in underneath the goal to allow for some easy layup. But for the most part, when you've been able to get into that full court press, you've been able to force a lot of headaches for Northeast here early on. So a chance to tie it up here with a pair of made free throws out of Wilson. She's got four points. Those were early on in the contest. Taking her time at the free throw line. Couple of dribbles, now fires, and it's back iron no good. Free throw stripe just not being kind to ICC early on here tonight, as we mentioned earlier. Shoot it at 61% for the year as a team. Keely Wilson, though, one of the better ones on the team at 75%. Needs to hit the back end of this one here. Shot is up, and she does so. Five points now for Wilson. Of course, my stats brought to you by Sonic. Always unofficial, but I don't have Northeast shooting a free throw yet. One point contest, 28 to 27. Northeast tries to save an inbounds, and it goes out of bounds. So right now it's feast for famine against this press. Sometimes they get a pretty easy layup out of it, and then sometimes they have those turnovers just like that as well. Well, that's the second or third time you've seen Northeast just panic as the shot clock, as the 10 second clock starts to run out. They have to get the ball across the half court stripe, and they just simply throw the basketball away. ICC with it now. Watkins wanting to go on the drive, goes baseline, scoop shot is not there. 
Nice job on the rebound by Northeast. Lost it, was able to get it back. Now here come the Lady Tigers wanting to push. They lead by one with 5.25 to go until halftime. That shot is up and a mauling underneath. Pick who you want to call that foul on on ICC. They're going to say it was on number 23. Wilson's first foul, team fourth foul. And so this will send Northeast to the free throw line. A chance to build on this 28-27 lead. Well, you could tell early on with the officiating crew, they, they are going to blow the whistle tonight. They're not going to let this rivalry matchup get out of hand whatsoever. Anything close to contact has been a foul call so far here tonight as Northeast does go to the charity strike. First free throw, no good for Newsom. Awaiting the second here. It's on its way and it's good. 11 points now for Newsom in the contest. 29-27, 5.18 to go here. Northeast with the lead, ICC with the basketball. Watkins fires up a quick three, it's off the mark, follows her shot, but traveled. She didn't realize the ball was gonna come to her that quick and try to get the shot off, but drugged that pivot foot. Well, you gotta give credit to her for following her own shot and trying to get the offensive board, but as it hits her in the hand, she wasn't really expecting it, and just took out running with it towards the rim to try to lay one up. So, did the right thing in the right position. We gotta put that ball on the floor. Scarlett Guest will check into the contest for the first time tonight for ICC. This substitution being brought to you by the, wow, how was that? That's got to be a travel. That's, a, that's right in front of the official. That's a terrible call. And that's got to be a charge. That's a makeup call. That's nothing but a makeup call. They, they're saying she was fumbling the ball around, but if it comes back to her, you've got a choice to call her. She passed it and caught it. And, passed yeah, it and, caught and then it. landed exactly. with it. That's, exactly. That's elementary. And even the referee's explanation to Coach Porter was clearly saying that she traveled. But sometimes you just kind of get caught up in the heat of the moment. Uh, they said the ball don't lie, and it didn't right there. The charge call is more beneficial to the Indians anyway. Absolutely. Guess three-point baskets off the mark. No good. 4.50 to play here. 29-27. Northeast with the lead here over the Lady Indians. Tigers trying to find someone to pass it to. Just get it away as they reset their offense. Loose ball on the floor. Ten seconds now on the shot clock. Northeast gathering and re-going here. Inside they go, and that ball they said was deflected away again. Two shot, two, or excuse me, two seconds on the shot clock, and that's going to be a shot clock violation as it did not hit any rim that time. And so nice job defensively by ICC getting in the hip pocket of the Lady Tigers. Yeah, great job by Keely Wilson on defense that time as she pretty much defended the ball for a full 30-second clock and forces a terrible shot there as the buzzer goes off. So good job by the Indians as they'll get the basketball back. 421 to go in the first half, trailing by a bucket. Suri Dunlap will check into the contest here for ICC. 29-27, 4.15 to go here until halftime. Gandy with the basketball on the right wing. Going to dribble it back up top and reset the offense. Not really extending that man, or excuse me, man-to-man -man defense well beyond the three-point line. Now they go inside, and the shot is up, and there's a foul. ICC might have got away with the walk there. Uh, Tamoya Brownlee was frustrated, and she's standing there wide open at the right side block, waiting on the basketball. The screen had been set. She'd rolled wide open and didn't think she was going to get it. By the time she finally got it, she probably did take one too many steps, but she got hacked as she put the ball up, and will go with the foul call instead of the walk. Well, that foul was called on Jackson of Northeast. That is going to be her third foul. Wow. So she'll have to check out the contest with 4.01 to go here in the second quarter. First free throw, no good. The iron continues to be unkind for ICC from the free throw line. This game, I'm not going to say it could be out of hand right now, could really have a different uh, tone to it if ICC was making their free throws at a better clip. Second free throw, that one no good. Yeah, that's definitely going to be something we look at the box score at the halftime break and realize that's a number where if ICC shot 70% off the line, they would have a handy lead in this basketball game. We do invite you to stay tuned for the Little Caesars halftime report. Coming your way here, we'll take a look at some first half stats being brought to you by Sonic of Fulton as there is a foul. And that one's going to be whistled there on Tabria Gandy. I'm going to guess they're going to say Gandy was inside the arc underneath the goal because she was definitely there and set in time as she's a little slow to get up after the contact. Yeah, that's Williams. That's, that's Williams, excuse me. Slow to get up there as. As they're trying to get a towel in here as well to wipe up the floor and they're gonna give Williams a chance to check out the contest. Hopefully just maybe knock the wind out of her. She's got her hands on the back of her head trying to catch a little bit of air there. So the referees now are going to mop up the floor here. That substitution into the game is Normant. She'll come in. Williams will check out. ICC going to try to get in a trio. More subs in. They are going to let them come in here. This is going to be Wilson 
Uh, also going to be Freelo and number 12, Overton, into the contest here. Those four substitutions for ICC is being brought to you by Little Caesars in Fulton. Well, there's one thing about it, Adam, is ICC is going to have fresh legs throughout the course of this ball game. They've subbed them in and out at will. I, I, by my count, I've got 11 different ladies into the basketball game for the I Indians tonight. First free throw is up in and good after a long wait there from Webster. She's got three points. Makes it a three-point contest, 30 to 27. Second free throw is up in and good as well. So I've got them unofficially three of four from the charity stripe for Northeast. They lead it 31-27. Northeast kind of go to a little bit of a press of their own. And then just a wild pass to nobody, and Northeast gets the trap and the turnover. This is very uncanny out of what we've seen out of ICC this season, but credit Northeast, they're scrappy, they're playing hard, and they're really giving it to the Lady Indians so far, not playing like a two and nine squad. Turnaround shot in the paint, up, no good. Overton gets big for the rebound, and now here comes ICC wanting to push on the offensive end. Overton bounce pass to Freelo, layup is good. Good pass right there, out in transition. Sarah Freelo fills the lane just like she's supposed to there to the left side block. Good bounce pass to her, and she's an easy lay in. Northeast on the other end, a reach in and a foul. And that's going to be a chance at a three-point play here for Caldwell, who picks up her fourth point of the night. And it seems like ICC just not getting back every time they get a made basket. Well, you see Northeast is making a concerted effort on made baskets by ICC. They're going to inbound the basketball, and they're going to try to get it up the floor as fast as possible. They're not going to let ICC sit down into that full-court press. They're going to try to get it coast-to-coast -coast as fast as they can. Free throw is off the mark, no good, and ICC wants to take a timeout. Timeout on the floor, we're going to take it with them. 33-29, Northeast with the lead, 2.54 to go here. Back with more right after this on the ICC Sports Network. This broadcast of ICC Athletics is being brought to you by Renaissance Bank, Little Caesars, Davis Ford, The Sonic of Fulton, Tupelo Coca-Cola Bottling Works, The Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi, First American National Bank, the ICC BSU, your Itawama County Farm Bureau agent, Joey Cox, Cagle Eye Center, the ICC Foundation, the Bank of Oklahoma, and the ICC Alumni Association. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. 2.54 to play here until halftime. Northeast leading ICC 33-29. We do want to welcome those that are joining us here on Super Talk. Mississippi 101.9 FM. Uh, you had the uh, Super Talk Sports Show going on before this. Joining us now, I wonder if they had anything to talk about today. Not, you know, not much happening in the sports world in the state of Mississippi today. They probably had a tough three-hour time slot to fill. Williams fires up a quick three-pointer. It's off the mark, no good. Keely Wilson gets the rebound. Her shot left short, no good, and Northeast clears the air ball. Well, you know, it's not been so far tonight that ICC has not had good looks at the goal. I mean, they've been right there with looks right in underneath the basket and not been able to finish consistently. Tigers with the basketball, working right to left on your radio dial. The ball slapped out of bounds, last touch by ICC. So it'll be the Tigers ball on the baseline with 17 seconds left on the shot clock, 2.18 to go here in the second quarter, 33-29. Northeast with the lead and the basketball. Northeast in their home black and gold, ICC in their gray and trimmed in red and blue and Williams fired up but she slapped the ball out of bounds that time and uh, I'll tell you this right now we need to see that intensity on the offensive side I do like the intensity defensively though as there's a quick turnaround shot and a foul is called and oh we got a little bit of us uh, sportsmanship going on here between or not sportsmanship that's I'd be the opposite yeah, of that yeah yeah I should say and the referee doing a good job of stepping in that time but I tell you what um Newsom that time got away with a pretty sick elbow when she posted up on Williams. And so it typically it's the retaliator that gets caught on the fouls. Yeah, a little frustration setting in for the Lady Indians for sure. As it's, it's been physical down and underneath the goal and lots of fouls been called both ways. That foul called on Williams as the Tigers will go back to the free throw line. This is Newsom at the line. Her first free throw is up off the mark and no good. She's got 11 points so far in the contest. Of course, we'll go over those Sonic stats at halftime. We'll kind of recap the first half. And for those that are just now joining us on Super Talk Mississippi, second free throw, that one is up in and good. 12 points now for Newsom. She leads all scores in the contest. Just like they've done all night off a of made free throw, Northeast goes to full court press. 
and look, layup is and, good. And look how different it is with Rhea Gandy in there to run the point. Just simply right up the middle of the floor. Nobody's quick enough to cut her off. And she takes it coast to coast, even through the middle of the full court press. And hits a floater in the lane. Gandy makes it a 34-31 contest in favor of Northeast. Inside they go with it. Turnaround shot is up, and there's another whistle. You know, if I'm Northeast right now, I'm going to that right side block yep. every time on the offensive end because you're getting either a layup or a foul call against the ICC each and every time. That's the sixth foul to go against the Indians in the second quarter. And I believe we're probably approaching 25 fouls so far in the game altogether. Is that first free throw? No good. That's the second foul called on Normant as this is number 25 bursts at the free throw line. Second free throw, that one good. So four point contest, 35-31, 141 to go here until halftime. Adam Gore, Jordan Smith, bringing this action here on the ICC Sports Network. Norman shot, lost it on the way up. Loose ball on the floor, still loose. It's gonna be out of bounds, last touched by the Tigers. So it'll be ICC ball on the baseline. Good job there by Keely Wilson getting in there, even though it probably didn't look like she had much of a chance to get the offensive rebound. Just by her getting in there in the middle of it, it forces someone from Northeast to knock it out of bounds and gets the Indians an extra possession. 1.30 to go here until halftime. Gandy with the basketball, drives inside, knifes her way through. Couldn't get the shot to fall. Loose ball on the floor. Gandy chases it down and keeps it with the Indians. That's, Great hustle. That's two gain possessions by ICC off strict hustle plays. As Tabria Gandy gets her own miss, rebounds it. Now with 10 seconds left on the shot clock, tries to make something happen on the Gandy. offensive end. Gandy now turn around, jumper in the paint. It's good. That's what happens. I mean, two extra offensive possessions will not show up in the newspaper tomorrow morning. But Tabria Gandy, by fighting for the basketball, gets the Indians those extra two points. Makes it a two-point contest, 35-33. Inside a minute to play now here until halftime. Northeast with the basketball. ICC, are they falling back in a 2-3 zone? You don't see this too often now, the Lady Indians. Nice no-look pass. Layup is good. Newson playing outside her mind right now. Did you say she averages 14 a game? I did say it was 14 a game, and she's got about 14 she's off that right side it. block again so far tonight. I, I would imagine the halftime break, there's going to be a lot of Coach Porter talking about how to cut that off down inside the paint. Yeah, Newsom with 14 already in the contest. 25 seconds to go here. Into the corner, ICC goes with it back up top to Gandy. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Gandy drops it off underneath the Pfeiffer. Nice Great pass. Job. Great job. You've really seen Tabria Gandy come into her own in the last three minutes of this game. Really facilitating the offense there. Attracts the attention. An easy pass down low to Pfeiffer and just a layup off the right side. Five seconds. Freelo gets it. Up the floor to Wilson. Wilson's going to have to put something up in a hurry. Does so. Oh, off the mark. No good. We played one half here. Northeast takes a 37 to 35 lead into the break. We're going to take a quick break and come back with more here. Part of the Little Caesars halftime report. ICC trails at 37 35 here at the break. Back with more right after this on the ICC Sports Network. Get a Little Caesars large, extra most bestest stuffed crust pizza topped with pepperoni and cheese. And stuffed with over three feet of cheese. In the crust. That's right. We stuffed cheese. Into the crust of the pizza with extra cheese. And the most pepperoni. All at the nation's best price of just nine bucks. Try our convenient app and pizza portal pickup. Pizza, pizza. The longer a person has diabetes, the more likely they are to develop diabetic retinopathy. If left untreated, diabetic retinopathy can lead to blindness. That's why it's important for diabetics to have a comprehensive eye examination with dilation once a year. I'm Dr. Laurie Cagle of Cagle Eye Center in Fulton. We offer comprehensive eye exams to provide diagnosis and treatment of various eye diseases. Browse our large selection of frames available in prescription and non-prescription. Call to schedule your appointment today at Cagle Eye Center in Fulton. Student involvement is a top priority here at Itawamba Community College. If you want to be involved with student government, then the Student Government Association is the place for you. If you have a stellar GPA, then Phi Theta Kappa is for you. If you're interested in the diverse culture of our campus population, then the Diversity Club is for you. If you're interested in leadership and service, then Indian Delegation is for you. If you're majoring in computer programming or computer networking, then CPNA, the Computer Programming Networking Association, is for you. If you're interested in good conversations and free lunch on Thursdays, then the Wesley Foundation is for you. Our health science programs also have specific organizations for those majors. Student Activities is excited to bring you new opportunities here at the ICC Tupelo campus. Whatever your passion may be, we have a place for you. This video is brought to you 
by Phi Theta Kappa, Beta Tau Sigma, Tupelo Campus. You live life on your own terms. You won't be told what you can't do. And we're here to back you. From the boardroom to the big stage, Renaissance Bank supports women striving for success. Because greatness isn't held to anyone's expectations, except yours. So if anyone says you can't, prove them wrong. Rise with Renaissance, supporting women and the communities they influence every day. The Car Hop Classic for just $2.99 is the perfect one-two punch of flavor and value. You Time! That! You need a trainer to help you eat the burger? Hey, stay out of this. Don't get in my head, man. There's barely room for me in there. Hurry in and try quarter pound double cheeseburger or six inch Philly plus tots for $2.99. My mom never let me eat this much cookie dough. What would she say if she saw you eating this big scoop cookie dough blast? I don't know, I ask her. Don't tell your father. <laughs> oh, naughty, naughty. <laughs> Hurry in and scoop up our new cookie dough treats. Try order ahead to get happy hour anytime. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. 37 to 35, Northeast with the lead over ICC here at halftime. Part of Little Caesars halftime report, we take a look at the Sonic stats in the first half. Jordan, I know you've got all the scoring there and some other stats that kind of jump out to you. So uh, let's start with some of the scoring here in the first half. Absolutely, 37-35, Northeast leads ICC after one half. It was 20 to 18 after the first quarter. Both teams 17 points apiece in the second, and that got us to the halftime score at 37 to 35. Taking a look for first at Northeast numbers from the first half. They're led in scoring by Tekiera Newson. Newson has led the team with 14 points per game on the year. She has 14 exactly in the first half and she did not come off the floor in the first half. Also three rebounds to go along with those 14 points as she shot six of nine from the field, two of four off the free throw line. Second most points on the team, there was two, two ladies that split with six. Chancey Jackson had six points on three of five shooting from the field and three rebounds to go along with that. But Jackson had to come off the floor with about eight minutes to go in the first half because she had picked up her third personal foul of the half. Also with three personal fouls for the Lady Tigers was Dashe McGloster. She had to come off the floor early too. She played 14 minutes in the first half but did not register any points. Also with six points, Kimara Atterbury in six minutes off the bench. She picked up six points on two of three shooting. Two quick three-pointers that came down the floor. She hit on two possessions in a row and got those six points. Also in the scoring column was Quitiana Webster with four points. And Kathy Burst picked up one bucket for three points as well. Eleven turnovers total for Northeast. 14 rebounds. Comparing that to ICC, it was 19 rebounds for the Lady Indians and seven turnovers. So both teams, a lot of four-court press action, but ICC forces 11 turnovers. Northeast forces seven. So from the floor total, Northeast 15 of 26, so that's a better than 57% clip for the Lady Tigers. Only two of four from the three-point line. So 26 shots, but only four from behind the arc. And then five of nine free throw off the free throw line for Northeast. That's a 55.5% clip off the free throw line. Flipping the page and taking a look at ICC, they started Sarah Freelo, Whitney Watkins, Zaire Burgess, Tabria Gandy, and Keely Wilson. All five of those ladies found into the scoring column. They were led by Tabria Gandy off three of six shooting from the floor. She had 10 points and three rebounds to go along with those 10 points in the first half. Whitney Watkins was three of seven from the floor, but was two of five from the three-point line. That got her to the eight-point clip. The leading scorer on the team averaging 12.9 points per game. She collected a rebound as well to go along with those eight points. Also in the starting lineup, Keely Wilson had five points on only two of eight shooting. Two rebounds for Wilson, five points through the first half of action. Also in the scoring column from the starting lineup, Sarah Freelo two points and Zaire Burgess had a basket as well. The Lady Indians played 13 players in the first half. Seeing the most points off the bench was Lamaya Pfeiffer, who was four of six from the field for eight total points and three rebounds as well. Also getting into the scoring column off the bench was Shamaria Overton. She had one free throw. But also seeing time off the bench tonight so far was Zuri Dunlap, Scarlett Guest, Tamoya Brownlee, Tatiana Norman, Shamaya Williams, and Mariah Holland. So lots of ladies been out there on the court so far tonight for the Lady Indians. ICC led. Northeast in the rebounding column, 19 to 14, and forced four more turnovers than Northeast did. In total, from the floor, 13 to 35 shooting for ICC at a 37% clip, two of seven from the three-point line at 28%. So right there along the lines of what we've seen all year long, coming into the night, ICC was shooting it at a 41% clip, but from behind the arc at only a 26% clip. So the numbers pretty right there, right there pretty close to what we've seen all year long. The one that we have not seen 
as good as we've typically seen throughout the year is that free throw number. 7 of 14 from the free throw line, so only a 50% clip off the charity stripe for the Lady Indians. And you would imagine, Adam, as back there in the locker room, Coach Porter's having a conversation with her team, and basically it's, it's two things that could change the course of this game. Can you make your free throws because you've had the opportunity so far tonight and you've not done so, and can you slow down Northeast in the paint? We don't have the points in the paint numbers, but I would say of the 37 they have, 20 of them have come right there inside the arc underneath the glass. Absolutely. We'll find out those answers and more in the second half as we'll take a break. 37-35 is your score. I see some members of the ICC softball team here tonight. We're going to hear from Coach Andy Kirk, part of Little Caesars Halftime Report. ICC trails it by two at halftime. Back with more right after this on the ICC Sports Network. Get a Little Caesars large, extra most bestest stuffed crust pizza topped with pepperoni and cheese. And stuffed with over three feet of cheese in the crust. That's right, we stuffed cheese into the crust of the pizza with extra cheese and the most pepperoni. All at the nation's best price of just nine bucks. Try our convenient app and Pizza Portal Pickup. Pizza, pizza. Well, Coach, we're about a month away from the season kicking off on uh, January 31st. Just, uh, you know, coming off historic season, 40-16-1 last year, made the national tournament, won the conference tournament, and uh, runner-up runner in region there. Just, you know, we know the conference is always stacked. It's just uh, talk a little bit about that non-conference schedule that you got that's going to start the season. Yeah, coming up, you know, being in junior college, we always have a half of a new team every year. And uh, like I said, we had a great run last year, lost some really good sophomores, got some new players in, got some veterans back. But we're looking at that preseason conference just to get us ready. You know, we're in the greatest conference in America and uh, the toughest conference in America. And we play, you know, mainly all Alabama junior colleges and then uh, Jackson State up in Tennessee, Jackson State and Bevel State and Alabama both have new coaches this year. and. Uh, it's going to be exciting for their programs coming in with new coaches, uh, you know, to play them, be a little mystery there. And then we play the perennial powerhouses, MMI, Snee State, uh, Wallace State's always ranked in the top 20. So those teams are really good at getting us, you know, within three hours of campus, they really get us ready for our tough conference uh, leading into the conference play. All right, well, let's talk about that conference play. We know there's always the tough games there. You have some that you circle, but we didn't necessarily got to mention what one you circle, but yeah. Talk about some of those conference games that you are looking forward to and to seeing what, how your girls are going to respond. Yeah, this year, uh, it, it's, uh, the schedule we had two years ago has changed up a little bit of when you play each other, but it's all the same road games. We're going to have to be road warriors. We have the longest trips uh, that we have. I mean, our administration looked at it, and it's just crazy that we got to go to Gulf Coast, to Pearl River, to Jones, to Hines, to Meridian. Two homes who is our furthest north, uh, north school. I mean, we stay on the road northwest. I mean, we are just going to be on the road with some really good programs. I mean, we got some good teams coming to our place as well. But, you know, it's, it's hard to uh, sweep on the road. It's hard to split on the road when you're, you know, I got their local umpires and, uh, you know, a lot of things against you. So our team's going to grow up really fast. And uh, we start conference play right there at the start of March. So it's going to be a, you know, tough 28 game schedule like it is every year. Okay, now some of the games that you do have on the schedule are some of your ser your special series you have every year with breast cancer awareness, ovarian cancer, and of course sophomore day. But uh, talk a little bit about those series, uh, the opponents, and what it means to both squads when they hit the field those days. Yeah, when we have our breast cancer and ovarian cancer, I mean, it's just a special, you know, to raise awareness. Uh, both teams always buy in. You always have a lot of, you know, we'll have people come back out who are survivors or in memory of people who might have passed away. Just to raise awareness, just to, you know, get some people to donate some money and keep it in the forefront for everybody to, to know about and not forget about because cancer is going to affect everybody at some point in their life, either personally or somebody in their family or friends. And then those are just two, you know, coaching uh, female sport that really, you know, hit high. They're in the top five cancers uh, for females. Now, uh, that Breast Cancer Awareness Series will be March 31st against Mississippi Delta here, and then the Ovarian Cancer Awareness Series will be on April 6th against Northeast. Yeah. Now, let's talk a little bit about that uh, rivalry there, since mm -hmm. it's going to be on a special yeah. day as well. Talk about that rivalry between uh, you guys in Northeast and what that means to your mm -hmm. program. Yeah, Northeast, I mean, uh, Coach Long and I, we've known each other 40 years, and it's a, 
it's you know 50 miles separate us but we're we're backdoor neighbors we get after each other and then having something to you know really take a you know you guys do a great job and i know their minister uh, their sports information does a great job of getting it out there and exposing it and just you know ovarian cancer is uh came really to the forefront with uh mississippi state getting it going everybody taking a challenge like we did a few years ago and just keeping it in the forefront in everybody's mind all right coach well just one last thing here just uh you talked about those road trips, got to be the road warriors, you got to win at home, of course, but uh, just talk about some of those road trips and how you are going to prepare your girls to get ready to play after being on the bus for a long time. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not like we're going 30 minutes down the road to play at Tupelo. That's what we talk about all the time. And we took a few trips, you know, the two hour range uh, during the, the fall to try to get ready. But, you know, when you got two trips where we'll go spend overnight, uh, they have to mature really quick. You know, uh, luckily we got a good group of sophomores. They will you know, help with us freshmen on how to travel, how to prepare, and it's not a vacation that we're going on a business trip. And uh, the last couple of years, we've been very successful as far as we're the only Mad Jack team uh, in softball that's not been swept in conference play, you know, and that, that's just some stability and that's a record. I know they want to keep uh, keep going this year is trying to at least get a split on the road, sweep at home. It's kind of the, the formula everybody uses, but in our conference, I mean, there's so many good teams, you're just trying to battle every day. Okay, well, I lied. I said one last thing, but I wanted you touched on those sophomores. I'd like for you to touch on them a little bit. Just yeah. talk about some of those sophomores meant to you last year's freshmen and what you expect out of them this season. We have a great core coming back. I mean, of course, you lose your uh, career wins. Uh, I mean, Olivia Burns broke every one of our pitching records last year. Uh, but we got Kaylee Nelson and Mary Kate Butler from Pontoc there. They're coming back as two of our pitchers, and uh, we're, we're ex they've done a great job this fall as far as just stabilizing the bullpen and helping some of the younger pitchers come in and get ready and we're expecting uh, great things out of those two then you come back with you know Maddie Mining was an all-american shortstop for us last year second in the country in stolen bases she's our catalyst at the top of the lineup gets everything going for us and then Hope Harbin uh, I thought was probably our most improved player last year from the start of the season to the end you know she's center fielder from Caledonia and we expect her to have a great sophomore year Summer Crowder from Morville uh, led us in home runs was right up there at the top of RBI has a lot of big hits she plays third base and uh, we expect big things out of her RBI wise and then Jessica Davis will be coming in from the outfield to play second base for us this year so uh, you know we got some others besides those but that's kind of our core coming back from last year they got a lot of playing time and we're expecting a lot of things out of them. All right coach well thank you for your time and we look forward to the season. Thank you guys. Roll try. Brought to you by at Itawamba Community College, your education is our top priority. With a 20 to 1 student to teacher ratio, you will get the help that you need from your instructors. With three locations in Fulton, Tupelo, and Belden, ICC offers classes that will prepare you to enter almost any job field of your choice. Learn more about Wallet Hub's number one community college in Mississippi and the 25th best in the country by visiting iccms.edu or apply online at apply.iccms.edu. Itawamba Community College, the best start here. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, as we get set to start the second half of play. Adam Gore, Jordan Smith here coming to you from Boonville, Mississippi. ICC will have the basketball to start the second half of play. Let's go ahead and give you your Coca-Cola lineup on the floor here for ICC. Tabria Gandy, Sarah Freelo, Whitney Watkins. You've got Ziri Burgess and Keely Wilson as there's a quick three-pointer put up. And a lot of contact, no foul call. As ICC goes empty on their first possession, ICC and Coke, now that's a winning combination. And Coach Porter hopes she can find that winning combo put together here in the second half, Jordan. Absolutely, you know, same starting five as we saw early on. The first quarter mostly led by the Indians, second quarter dominated by Northeast. We'll see what happens here over the course of the third quarter. Well, after a lot of whistles in the first half, there's been a couple of muggings on both sides of the floor. And no whistles blown here, so we'll see. We'll have to adjust quickly. So, Jordan, let's talk about it. Your keys to victory being brought to you by the Bank of Oklahoma. What does ICC need to do better here in the second half to be able to get that win? They have to lock down the paint on the defensive end. They were burned right in underneath the basket, specifically on that right side, several times there in the first half. Got to take that away. Northeast, not a team that's going to beat you from the perimeter more than likely. You got to make them beat you out wide. You can't give them those easy buckets in underneath the basket. On sure. the offensive end, you got to get the ball in the hands of Tabria Gandhi. You got to let her run the show and get out and transition. Missed jumper by Northeast. ICC gets it. Ball fake. Layup up in and good. That was Wilson with the basket. 
All led to you by Tabria Gandy. Gets the ball out in transition. Push it in a hurry. One pass to Wilson. And it's just drive the lane, easy lay in. All because you got out in transition and won with athleticism. 37-37 is your score. Eight and a half to play here in the third quarter. Tigers try to drive baseline, nothing there. Three-point basket on its way, back iron no good. Rebound pulled down by Burgess. So good, good job by ICC defensively on back-to-back -back possessions. Good job on defense. If they're going to beat you, you make them beat you out wide like that. They've shot the three-point ball less than 30% on the year. You can't let them beat you in underneath the basket. Watkins tries to force that pass inside. Great defense on the part of Northeast to get the ball back. 37-37 is your score. 8.05 to play here in the third quarter. Quickly going inside. Little high-low offensive set. Jumper from the Free throw line up in and good for Newsom. Newsom playing outside her mind came into the contest, averaging 14 points a game. She's got 16. And they're, they're continuing to run that offense from in underneath. That time, go in low to the post, attract that double team, then kick it back out to the charity stripe for an easy pull up jumper. Wilson with the basketball, works it into the corner. This is Freelo. ICC working right to left on your radio dial. Freelo driving baseline. Layup is good. Look at Sarah Freelo go to work over here out of the corner. Takes a dribble to the baseline, gets in underneath her man, and lays it up there off the glass and evens us back up at 39 apiece. And we've got a timeout taken here by Northeast. A quick timeout. 39-39 is your score. Let's take the break. Let's hear a word from the Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi. Back with more right after this on the ICC Sports Network. Everyone has a unique story to tell. Maybe your story has you performing your new song in front of a crowd, getting to play your favorite sport, or enjoying a horseback ride in the country. At Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi, our group of skilled surgeons understand your need to continue your story. That is why we are the preferred choice for orthopedic care. Thank you for choosing us. Our story is you. Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi. And welcome back to action, ladies and gentlemen. 7.26 to come to go here in the third quarter. 39-39 is your scores re reset. Northeast with the basketball. I'm Adam Gore joined by Jordan Smith here in Boonville. First of two games coming to you tonight here, both on the Let's Go ICC TV brand as well as Super Talk Mississippi 101.9 FM. There's a trap, ball sapped away, and ICC is going to send it out of bounds. And I tell you what, you're starting to see ICC collapse a lot quicker defensively. Absolutely. You know, you can tell early on here in the second half, a point of emphasis at halftime was we're going to attack better on the defensive end. We're going to trap the basketball and make them force things in areas. Tigers with it, rolling inside. Layup is up in a good. Just a nice, strong move that time by Newsom. And Newsom continuing to have a big night here, her 18th point. And that's right there where those points came in the first half. Right off that right block, they've attacked the right side of the goal. Very hard early on the night. Gandy with the basketball. Now works it over on the left wing. This is Wilson with the basketball. Bodies hitting the floor in the paint. Three-pointer is off the mark. No good. Nice block out underneath that time by Northeast to collect the rebound. Lots of contact away from the basketball right there. A black jersey and a gray jersey both on the floor. And more bodies hitting the floor on the other side that time. Still no whistle. Here comes Wilson with the basketball in transition. Goes underneath and wow. So after a first half where they couldn't play 30 seconds without a whistle, now we can't even get a whistle. We finally do is that time it was a stream over the back by Caldwell. I'll tell you what, um, Wilson that time got mugged in the paint. No call. Well, it's looking like one of those nights where the first half is going to wear out the whistle. In the second half, they're going to be reluctant to blow it. As that's only the first foul call so far in the second half. And that was one you just had to call because somebody got plowed over in the lane. Dominique Caldwell called with a foul. She will check out. That was her third foul. Also checking into the contest here for ICC. That is going to be Mariah Holland into the contest. These substitutions being brought to you by the ICC Foundation. Three-point basket quickly put up that time. Left well short. No good. Northeast with the rebound. Might have got away with the travel. Now it's going to be a three-on-one opportunity here on the other end. Oh, too many passes and a big-time break there for the Lady Indians. Well, not a great entry pass down into the post as they're trying to get the basketball to Nashea McGloster, who had set up off the block. They overthrow her. Transition comes down into her face. She tries to make an extra pass to get an open layup, and she throws it away as the pressure gets to her. That's a big break for the Indians. 41-39, Northeast with the lead. 6.03 to go here in the third quarter of play. Drive to the baseline, shot is up in and good. That was Wilson. She hits the deck after making the shot. The big basket knocked down there by Wilson. Allows the Indians to get back into that half-court press again. They'll try to slow this game down, force a turnover. 
For Wilson, I've got that as her ninth point. Tigers with the basketball near turnover in the corner, able to get it back, and there's going to be a hip check foul called on Watkins of ICC. That's one of those freedom of movement calls there against Whitney Watkins as the offensive player is free to move, and if you hip check them like that when they try to come around you, they're going to get you for that call, even if your hands are straight up in the air. First foul called there on Watkins. So Tigers ball on the far side of the floor. 41-41 is your score. 5.35 to go here in the third quarter. The first of two games coming your way tonight here on the ICC Sports Network. Baseline jumper on its way up in and good. Good looking jumper knocked down that time by McGloster. I've got that unofficially as her first points of the night. Doing it all herself. Got a defender right on top of her. Gets a little bit of a screen, a little separation, not much. But she's able to rattle home the jumper. It's a loose ball and bodies go everywhere again. Oh, and a Nasty collision underneath that time as number 33 McGloster, excuse me, 32 McGloster, who just hit that jumper, kind of got rolled up on that time after bodies hit the floor. She said she's okay, almost looked like uh, for a football reference, one of those offensive linemen who just happens to get rolled up on a tackle, and good to see that she's okay. Definitely been a physical brand of basketball so far, really, really all night long, and the referees did a good job in the first half of keeping it in check with the foul call, but so far here in the second half, it stayed physical, but we have not got that whistle quite as much. Yes, 43-41 is the score, 5-12 to play here. A little bit of confusion on whose ball it should be and whose ball it shouldn't be, and I'm gonna be honest with you here, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I was more concerned, I was watching the player who uh, got tangled up over there and Trying to get a shot clock oh, reset. So they're checking the shot clock, and they're going to put 28 seconds. So they're going to say Northeast had possession of the basketball, so the shot clock should have reset. So down to 28, now we'll play. So the Tigers with the basketball. They lead it 43-41. Five minutes and five seconds to play here in the third quarter. Inside they go with it, and that's going to be a pushing foul, as that one's going to be a push in the back, and I believe that's going to be on Shamaya Williams. And if that's the case, I believe that could be her third, and it is. Well, and they're trying to go right back to that right block once again. As I know, it probably sounds redundant, but that's where the key to the offense has been. They go in there before the basketball can even get to her on the entry pass. They call Williams for getting her in the back and forcing her out of the lane. Burgess checks into the contest for ICC. Nice backdoor pass. Layup, though, is no good, and we've got a foul on the rebound. So we were talking about it a while ago. Jordan, I think we jinxed this. We couldn't go. <laughs> we saw some muggings with no foul call. Now the whistle blowing like crazy. So that foul's gonna be whistled on number two. That's Newson, her second foul. Each team with two fouls so far here in the third quarter. Wilson with the basketball, wanting to go baseline. Good help defense that time to force her back out and reset the offense. Gandy with it now, wanting to walk off, work off a screen from Holland. Gandy tried to drop it off to Watkins, wasn't there. Tough defense out of the Tigers right now. Wilson with the basketball, spins in the paint, tries to go up, loses the handle on the basketball, and the Tigers get it. Yeah, right now Keely Wilson's just trying to do too much with the basketball out beyond the perimeter. Tigers turn it over, Gandy gets it back and buries a jumper. She just finds the basketball. Or may I say the basketball just yes. finds her out in transition. Just an easy floater right there off the logo. Gets the Indians back all square. 43-43, 4.17 to go here in the third quarter. I've got that unofficially as 11 points now for Gandy in the contest. Skip pass, nearly taken away by ICC. Tigers keep it. Up and under move and a lot of extra steps. Rebound's going to be tipped out and taken by Wilson. Now here comes Wilson wanting to get out and run. Wilson looking to go coast to coast. Underneath she goes and she's fouled. Good job there by Wilson. Get it out in transition. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. Attack the basket. You know, most of the time you're going to get the layup or you're going to get fouled from behind. That time she gets the foul. It'll be sent to the free throw line. Need to hit those free throws. Only shot at 50% in the first half. Got to do much better than that down the stretch here tonight. That foul was whistled on Burst. As Dunlap will come into the game, we're going to give a quick breather to Gandy here. Figure you won't see her too often on the bench, but you do don't want to run her out of gas before the contest is over here. 43-43 is the score. 3.58 to go here. ICC at the free throw line. Lady Indians largely the night's been four. It's been six for the Tigers. Wilson, first free throw. That one no good. So that puts you below 50% on the night from the charity stripe. And you know they say in games that are separated by five points, you can typically look to the free throw line to find your winner. So far tonight, you're not finding ICC as your winner. Second free throw, that one's no good, but there's an offensive rebound as that was Dunlap getting big and getting the boards. So Wilson's gonna take over at point guard with Gandy on the bench. And nearly turns it over. Watkin gets it back, and now she does turn it over. Just a sloppy possession, and Gandy getting back up off the bench for ICC. Layup's no good, Wilson with the rebound. 
Keeley looking to run the floor. Didn't have numbers. Wisely is going to back it back out now. Gets it back. Wilson eyes, tries. Can't buy the three-point basket. Offensive rebound from Holland, and she's fouled. Good job there by Mariah Holland. Doing the job of a post player. You get the offensive rebound. Don't put the ball on the floor. Go right back up with it. She does it that time and gets fouled from behind. So this will send ICC back to the free throw line. And, and to be quite honest with you, it's just not been a good spot for ICC tonight. Mariah Holland will go to the line. She 12 of 20 off the charity stripe for the year. The 5'10 freshman out of Lafayette County High School. So 60% clip as she steps to the charity stripe. Looking for her first points of the night and buries that one. That was a good looking shot there. Breaking it down from an old school guy. Got that good knee bend. That snake, excuse me, snake bite release. <laughs> Ball rotation as it yes. goes towards the rim. And there you go. Carving copy of, of the second one there. And big free throws made there as ICC takes now a two point advantage, 45 43. Got the Bria Gandy back in the basketball game, Adam. Gandy back into the contest. We'll reset your Coca Cola lineup on the floor here momentarily on the next offensive possession for ICC. Quick jumper is off the mark, and my goodness, a weak whistle there as that one's going to be called on number 12, Overton. And judging by the referee's uh, facial expression, after he blew that whistle, he was like, yeah, I shouldn't have blew the whistle on that one. Well, uh, the motion to the scorer's table was that the foul occurred towards the elbow. But really, oh, yeah. if, if anything, there was a little bit of a hand clap up at the release. Maybe. I mean, maybe. We can look back at the replay and may notice there was no contact whatsoever. But two free throws for Northeast. They were tied back up at 45. So Northeast, we talk about ICC struggling from the line. Northeast has done a good job of taking advantage of those free throws. On the floor for ICC, number 11, Trevria Gandy. Number 12 is Overton. Number 3, Dunlap. Number 5, Burgess. And number 24, Holland. That is your Coca-Cola lineup on the floor. ICC and Coke. Now that's a winning combination. We do thank Buddy Long and all the fine folks there at the Tupelo Coca-Cola Bottling Company. Long two-point jumper, bouncing around, no good. Rebound, tip, tip, tipped, and controlled by the Tigers. Got to crash those boards offensively if you're ICC. Your point guard, Tabria Gandy's in there fighting for offensive rebounds. She's the only one. You got to crash those boards, get in there and fight. 45-45 is your score. Coming up on two and a half to play here in the third quarter. Tigers with the basketball working left to right on your radio dial. Inside they go, running hook shot, no good. Rebound, ripped down by the Tigers. Shot partially blocked, a late whistle and a foul on ICC. And they're going to say a foul on the shot. Well, I was thinking it may be a foul on the box out, but they're yeah. going to say it was on the shot, and that's going to send Dominique Caldwell, the 5'6 sophomore guard from Warren Central, to the free throw line. Yeah, well, we apologize, folks, that are watching or listening tonight. Uh, we said they weren't blowing the fouls, uh, blowing the whistle a lot. Well, they're starting to now as that free throw bounces around and finds its way in for Caldwell. I've got that for seven unofficially this evening for Caldwell. I'm with you. I really thought, if anything, it was well after the shot, almost a two count after the shot as the free throw was up and good. She's got eight, and the Tigers have battled back to take a two-point advantage. I like this offensive set for ICC. We see Overton and Gandy, two, two ladies that I would classify as a point guard on the floor to help break this 2-2-1 press. The Tigers do fall back. Don't put on much of a press there, almost like a little token press as they're in a man-to-man -man defense. ICC with the basketball working right to left on your radio dial. Needs some movement on offense. Holland with the basketball, works it over now to Overton on the left wing. I'm with you, ICC just not moving well without the basketball, a lot of standing around looking. Gandy with it now, wants to drive inside, gets the mismatch, and we've got a foul. I mean, that's gotta be a foul there that goes against Kathy Burst as Gandy comes off the left side of the lane and just runs right into somebody and knocks her back. You know, when that happens and there's a push that occurs, it's gotta be a foul call. So this will send Gandy to the free throw line. That is the third foul on Burst. So now for ICC and Northeast, you got to start playing smart here with players getting in foul trouble. You Gandy. would think the foul trouble would be something that would benefit ICC. They played 13 players in the first half. They do have a deep bench. They've had a lot of ladies get involved as Gandy knocks home the first free throw. Winning the second free throw here for Gandy is on his way, and that one no good. Oh, tough miss there for Gandy. One-point contest, 47-46. Turnover, and ICC gets the ball back now, trying to go coast-to-coast coast inside, a little out of control, and count the basket. Good job there by Overton out in transition. Attacks off the right side. No, she has that foul call. Goes up, finishes it out. And it is a block that goes against Deshae McGloster. That'll be her fourth foul, so she's going to have to come to the bench. All around, nice swing of events there for the Lady Indians. Well, a big basket there for Overton. That is her third point of the night. And a chance at a three-point play the old-fashioned way here. 
Free throw is good. Big make there for Overton. She's got five points unofficially in the contest. Wilson will check back in. Gandy will check back out. She didn't really get that breather we talked about earlier. She legit went to the bench, sat down, and got right back up and came in. So 150 to go here in the third quarter. Going to try to steal a little bit of extra time here to see if you can get her to catch her breath for a strong fourth. A dangerous pass there. 49-47, ICC with the lead. Northeast driving baseline and a double dribble call. That's what that defensive pressure applies. You had the big, long cross-court pass, and they try to attack the rim, but a good close out there by ICC. And just as you see that defensive pressure get applied, you start to see Northeast fold a little bit. But for ICC right now, you've got to value the possessions. Look like we got away with a carry there. So a break for the Lady Indians. Value the possessions. Try to build on this two-point advantage here. 49-47 is the score. Wilson with the basketball now. Works it over in the left corner. Good defense out of Northeast. Five seconds now on the shot clock. Wilson going to have to make something happen. Tries to cross over the defender. Swings it around. Going to have to throw it up, and they don't. Just a bad possession on offense, Adam. As I don't recall, one pass going inside the three-point line. I mean, just back and forth. Ball getting tipped around. Not a great job of yep. taking care of the basketball. And that's what we said. You had to value possession, try to build on this lead, and Northeast steps up defensively to force the shot clock violation. 49-47, one minute to play here in the third quarter. ICC battles back to take the lead. Turnaround jumper is off the mark, short, no good. Rebound by Burgess. Now up to four they go. This is going to be Overton with the basketball. Crosses over the defender, splits them, couldn't get the free throw to go, but a nice job once again, Jordan. You said for ICC to be successful. Attack, attack, attack the basket, and they did that on that possession. Done a much better job here in the third quarter of securing the defensive rebounds, getting the basketball into the hands of Shamaria Overton and Tabria Gandhi, and forcing the issue out in transition. That's Two of the last three possessions will be Overton taking the basketball coast to coast. Once she finished and got at the end one, this time a foul. We'll go to the line for two. So Overton to the free throw line. First one is good. Overton had only shot five free throws on the year coming into the night. Had made four of those, so an 80% clip, but shot it a little bit better here tonight. Winning the second free throw is on its way. Short, no good, but there's an offensive rebound by Wilson. Her put back, no. Got to have that one. Get that offensive board. That's a big staple if you're able to finish that with under one minute to go in the third quarter. Need that bucket back if you're Keely Wilson. 50-47, ICC with the lead. 35 seconds to play here. About a 15-second differential between the game clock and the shot clock. Near turnover on the floor. And it's going to be a timeout taken by the... Lady Tigers with 26 seconds to play here. We're going to try to keep it here. Depends on how loud the band gets. But, Jordan, you're starting to see ICC play with a little bit more confidence as we close out the third quarter. Well, a couple of factors go into that, too. As you see, Robin Porter has really settled into a five-lady lineup. She's comfortable in going with two point guards out there to be comfortable in breaking the press. But also, ICC consistently tonight has played a lot of ladies. Northeast not quite so many. And it's starting to see that depth play a little bit of a role. Absolutely is. 26.2 seconds to play here. ICC leads it by three. The large lead tonight for ICC has been four. Let's just say this. This proves what everybody says about a rivalry. Throw records out the window. Northeast comes in with a record of 2-9, two, 0-1 two and and with a loss to Oklahoma in division play. ICC 8-2 with a win over Northwest in division play. And uh, the Tigers have come out not intimidated tonight. You know, the interesting thing to, about, to me about Northeast is, yeah, that 2-9 and nine record is not very pretty, but three of those losses have come by less than three points. Yep. So it's a better basketball team than the schedule would show. Runner is up, and they're going to call a charge. And that's going to be a big one there. That's Newsom. And I believe that's going to be her third foul picked up there, a borderline foul going the way of ICC. And I believe it was Zaire Burgess that took the charge. And I say that lightly. If she was in position and she yeah. sold it, a very good, uh, did a very good job of selling it. Yeah, the Northeast coach come out said she was falling before the contact was made, and I think she had a legit argument. Timeout now taken by ICC. That's a good timeout there by Coach Porters. That offensive set looked like it was headed nowhere. 8.2 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Going to get a chance to go in here, draw something up on the whiteboard and try to take more than a three-point lead in the fourth quarter. Absolutely. As you can hear the uh, pep man getting fired up here at Northeast, sometimes they're a little bit louder than we are in these confined uh, area with the low roof. Uh, I'm not going to go into the logistics of that, but uh, Jordan, rivalry night, 
big night here for uh, ICC, the men's game coming up next. We do invite you to stay tuned for that here, both on the ICC Sports Network and Let's Go ICC TV and Super Talk Mississippi. But, uh, yeah, the crowd's starting to fill in pretty well. We didn't anticipate a big crowd. Northeast not back in school yet. They come back on Monday. Some of the high school games getting shifted tonight because of the storms tomorrow night. But still a pretty good little energy in here. Absolutely. It's, it's a fun place to come play. It's one of those places the stands are built right on top of the court. You've got people in all four areas, you know, off the baselines and off the sidelines. So you feel like no matter what the crowd looks like, you feel like they're right on top of you no matter what. A quick inbounds, and then ICC steps out of bounds. Well, I'm pretty sure that's not how ICC drew it up. So now Northeast with a chance for the final shot. Got to get a stop right here. Can't let them tie this thing back up before the break. And there's a steal by Burgess. And ICC dodges a big bullet there. 50 to 47, your score will take a break and be back with the fourth quarter of play. ICC leads it by three. Back with more right after this on the ICC Sports Network. This broadcast of ICC Athletics is being brought to you by Renaissance Bank, Little Caesars, Davis Ford, the Sonic of Fulton, Tupelo Coca-Cola Bottling Works, the Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi, First American National Bank, the ICC BSU, your Itawama County Farm Bureau agent, Joey Cox, Cagle Eye Center, the ICC Foundation, the Bank of Oklahoma, and the ICC Alumni Association. Carhop Classic for just $2.99 is the perfect one-two punch of flavor and value. You Time that! You need a trainer to help you eat the burger? Hey, stay out of this. Don't get in my head, man. There's barely room for me in there. Hurry in and try quarter pound double cheeseburger or six inch Philly plus tots for $2.99. My mom never let me eat this much cookie dough. What would she say if she saw you eating this big scoop cookie dough blast? I don't know, why ask her? Don't tell your father. <laughs> oh, naughty, naughty. <laughs> Hurry in and scoop up our new cookie dough treats. Try order ahead to get happy hour anytime. And welcome back as we reset here, getting set to start the fourth quarter of play. ICC clinging to a 50 to 47 lead here as we head into the fourth and possible final quarter of play. Adam Gore, Jordan Smith. Jordan, ICC, what do they got to do to find a way to get this big win here on the road and move to 2 0 in conference play? I, I think just more of the same. Do what you did there in the third quarter. Continue to try to lock down that paint and get the basketball out in transition. I really like that two-point guard set we saw with Shamaria, Overton, and Tabria Gandy. It felt like that's really when ICC was able to take control of the offensive set. Gandy had the ball slapped away momentarily. Now ICC tried to feed it inside, bounces it right back out to Wilson. Wilson's jumper in the paint, no good. Rebound tipped around, and two Lady Indians arguing over the basket, or not really arguing about it, saying get it. Neither one of them did, but now ICC gets in reset. Great job by Shamaria Overton just to take the basketball, hold it for a minute, let things reset, take a breath, and run a different set on offense. Kick out to Overton. Long two is off the mark. No good. Nice block out underneath that time by Northeast. So you don't put any points on the board, but you run 50 seconds off the clock there on the offensive end. On the floor for ICC, this is their lineup. Number 11, Gandy. Number 5 is Burgess. You've got number 12, Overton. Number 24, Holland. And number 23, Wilson. That's your Coca-Cola lineup on the floor right now for ICC. Trying to go with a wild reverse layup. ICC caught looking. Offensive rebound. Putbacks no good, saved in bounds, and it's Gandy who gets it. Now Gandy's off to the races. Three on three break, going to take it on her own, didn't like the numbers, now kicks it out to Wilson. Wilson, ball face, drives baseline, she's hammered, couldn't get the ba basket to fall, but a nice job drawing the contact that time by Wilson. You know, I think that's when Keely Wilson's at her best, when she gets the basketball on the baseline, is able to use it to her advantage and work towards the rim. Typically, she's going to get somebody on her back and get a foul call right there. She does a good job getting to the charity stripe. Now. Got to make it pay. Got to make them pay when you get to the free throw line. Haven't done that so far tonight. Here in the fourth quarter is a good time to capitalize on those opportunities. So this is Wilson to the free throw line. First free throw, that one no good. The struggles continue. Wilson, she is unofficially one of one, two, three, four, five right now. Came into the night as one of the better free throw shooters on the team at a 75% clip. That one rattles around, takes all the iron it can, and goes down, makes her two of six on the night from the charity strike. I've got her with 10 points in the contest. ICC 51-47, 8.35 to go here. I'm going to give a shout-out to my guy, Joseph Merchant, checking in here on Super Talk Mississippi. Eight and a half to play here in the contest. ICC 51-47, Northeast with the basketball. The first of two games coming your way tonight on the ICC Sports Network. 
That's going to be a three-point basket. It's off the mark. Northeast, I think they're starting to see them run out of gas a little bit. And Wilson got it to herself somehow. And the ball bounced around after she tried a great bounce pass to Williams, who wasn't anticipating the basketball. Great hustle, though, by Wilson to get down the floor, find it, and have an opportunity to go back to the free throw and line. You know, we talked at the halftime break about our keys to the second half, and it was shut down the paint on defense and get the basketball out and transition on offense. Well, you saw the two things come together right there. Forced a bad three-point shot, a miss by Northeast, get the ball out and transition and get to the free throw line on your offensive set. First free throw is good for Wilson. Gives ICC the 52-47 lead and I believe that's the S. That is the largest lead of the night for ICC. What in the second free throw is on its way and that one back iron no good. Rebound to the Tigers. 52-47, 8.06 to play here. Ball nearly taken away by ICC. Tigers get it long two point jumper up in and good. Vic with her first points of the contest. A little bit of a pump fake there, gets the defender in the air, takes a dribble inside the lane, and pops just a beautiful shot there. Vic the forward out of Pine Grove. Williams with it, nearly throws it away. Wilson climbs the ladder to keep it. Gandy goes inside, nothing there. Now kicks it out, three-point basket on its way. Rattles in and out, no good. And the rebound being fought for, and Gandy fights it free. She didn't get the rebound, but a great job hustling that time by Gandy to keep the ball in the Lady India's possession. I mean, she's just that one of those ladies that just gets in there and scraps and claws. Doesn't matter how big she is, what, how tall she is, none of that matters. She's going to get in there and fight you down there for the rebounds. Wants another three-pointer on its way. That one off the mark, no good. Rebound tipped by Gandy. ICC comes away with it, and the jumper's good. Great job. And again, all because Cabria Gandy is willing to take her five-foot-six body and get in there and scrap with those forwards and centers for the rebounds. Three opportunities, and a steal from Keeley Wilson is going to get the Indians two more points, and Northeast is going to have to burn a timeout. Big, big basket there for ICC. They stretch the lead out to 56-49. We'll take a break and hear a few words from our sponsors and be back with more right after this on the ICC Sports Network. You live life on your own terms. You won't be told what you can't do. And we're here to back you. From the boardroom to the big stage, Renaissance Bank supports women striving for success. Because greatness isn't held to anyone's expectations, except yours. So if anyone says you can't, prove them wrong. Rise with Renaissance, supporting women and the communities they influence every day. Davis Ford in Fulton is your Ford dealer for new cars, trucks, and SUVs and has a wide inventory of certified pre-owned vehicles. Find your next dream car or truck from our Ford showroom or go online to davisfordsales.com and search our new and used inventory to see what is on our lot. So stop by and test drive the all-new fuel-efficient Ford Focus or Ford Fusion or the new Ford Explorer or F-150. Go further with Davis Ford, 904 West Main Street in Fulton or online davisfordsales.com. And welcome back as we reset out of the timeout. 7.02 to go here in the fourth quarter. ICC with their largest lead of the night at 56-49. Adam Gore, Jordan Smith bringing this ICC basketball action tonight, both on Let's Go ICC TV as well as the first time this season on Super Talk Mississippi. We do appreciate those that are tuning in here on Super Talk as well. Tigers with the basketball. They trail at 56-49. ICC. Jordan, we talked about it during that break. You're starting to feel maybe, maybe a little bit of that momentum shifting the way of the Lady Indians. Done a much better job on the defensive side of things, closing out, rebounding the basketball, and then pushing it out in transition. As a good defensive possession again from ICC, and a fight for the rebound will result in a foul against Northeast, and that's going to be five fouls against Takeria Newsom, who that's is big. the leading scorer for Northeast, and she's going to go to the bench with 6.45 to go. Yeah, that's a big foul out there. You said fouling out with 6.45. She does have 18 points in the contest. I mean, I know a seven-point game with 6.45 to go if you're Coach Brenda Mays with Northeast, but put your leading scorer out there with four, four fouls, that, that's, that's a tough loss if they pick up that fifth foul on a rebound play that you really didn't have a shot to go get. So Lady Indians with the basketball, facing a 2-2-1 press, half-court press here. Gandy just trots it into the front court. Now works it over the right side. That's Wilson. Wilson inside to Williams, and Williams bumped. And that's going to be a foul there on number 25. That's going to be Burst, and I believe that's going to be her fourth foul. And it is. 
Jordan, we said it, and I think it's starting to see it now. You're starting to see Northeast not moving their feet defensively, and a large part of that is they exerted so much energy in the first half defensively. I think you're starting to see maybe the uh, tank starting to run a little low. It was a physical battle throughout the first half. The second half turned more into the track meet style game ICC likes to play as we're going to press you on defense. We're going to make you fight for that. We're going to force you to turn it over, and we're going to get out and run over the top of your head. That's really what ICC wanted to do all night long, and they've been able to do it here in the second half. Watkins' three-pointer is off the mark, but ICC gets the rebound. Then they just throw it away. They're going to have to hurry up and get the ball down the other end and touch it as it's just going to go out of bounds. And ICC was not hustling to get back that time. Could have turned into a very easy layup situation. you got to be smarter than that in those situations. That's a needless turnover there for ICC. Is you got a new, brand new shot clock. You're up seven with six minutes to go. Every second you can bleed off the clock benefits you, and they throw the basketball away. There's a foul whistled on the inbounds play. That's going to be on Whitney Watkins. That's going to be her second foul. Team first foul of the fourth quarter. 56-49 is the score. 6.06 to play here in the fourth quarter. ICC with the lead. Northeast with the basketball. Try to go that backdoor pass. It wasn't there. Nearly loses it out of bounds. And then a, wow, a ticky-tack foul whistled there. And I think uh, you saw... Coach Mays in the ear of the official during that last time out talking about the foul di press, uh, difference in the contest. And two well, she really got, quick she fouls. got one back right there. That's that's a makeup call, no doubt about it. As she goes for the basketball, I'm not even sure she touched the Lady Indians' leg. I get called for the foul. That foul was whistled on Wilson. That's her second foul. Jumper up, and it was pretty as Caldwell. She's probably going to have to take over the scoring duties here. She's got 10 points now, does the southpaw to make it 56-51. Just rolled off the right side of that screen from Kathy Burst, wide open, is able to rattle home the jump shot. Williams jumpers off the mark, no good. Rebound tapped around and last touched by the Tigers. Well, ICC's had some good looks, just can't get the shots to fall. It's almost like ICC needs to take a little bit of a breath, though, here and realize you're up five points, 5.38 to go. You don't have to be in such a rush on the offensive end. As you got a 30-second shot clock, you might as well use some of it as they're rushing down the floor and forcing up some shots that just aren't the best. Substitution into the contest here. This is Holland in. Williams out. What a no-look pass. Great job to Bria Gandy. Again, just off the inbounds pass, works back to her left. A no-look pass back to her right, finds Keely Wilson off the left side block, and she lays it up. That's going to be an early nominee for our What a Play Wednesday, brought to you by Renaissance Bank. 58-51, 5-15 to play in the contest. ICC with the lead, Tigers with the basketball, needing a basket in a big way this trip down the floor. Go over the top, and there's a steal by Holland. Wilson with the basketball now, wanting to get out and move in transition. Kicks it out, long two on its way for Watkins, yes! Good job there, Whitney Watkins. Just, just when she disappears on the offensive end, she'll find an open look out of that corner, it seems like. And she puts that one home to give the Indians a nine-point lead. Largest lead of the night for either team. And then the ball loose on the floor, and we're going to have a kickball call here, and it's going to be a kickball on the Tigers, and just kind of tripped up on herself that time. And, and again, I, I think you're not sliding northeast in any way because, as I said, they've played a very – just physical, very fast-paced ball game, and you're starting to see some of these mistakes just becoming because they're trying to give that same effort, just don't have that energy. You've really seen Tabria Gandy and Shamaria Overton take over as point guards, too. They, they took that northeast press, and they were able to break it, get out and transition to score a lot of points in a hurry, and that's really been the change of point of this game. As should have been buck past it right there for the Indians. Yeah, yeah, and Wilson turned around with the coach Porter, so that was on me. She threw it about 90 miles per hour at Pfeiffer, probably should have Delivered an off-speed pass that time. It would have been an easy layup. And Pfeiffer, though, you got to make those catches underneath. 60, 51, 429 to play here. Northeast trailing, and there's a near steal. Now does turn into a steal as Gandy gets it. Gandy wanting to work one-on-one. -on -one. Takes on three, and it's fouled. Man, she is just crafty. When she's in the open floor, she got the defender on her heels, and we'll go to the line now to shoot two. Bria Gandy's fun to watch play, Adam. It, it, she's listed at five foot three. That's extremely generous yeah. to the sophomore out of Starkville. But she will get down there and she will fight in the post. She'll take on anybody, and she's very crafty about it too. She'll get people up in the air. She'll go up under, around them. Very athletic. A good sophomore leader for this basketball team. And she puts on the first free throw. Yeah, big make there. Now the lead ten, largest of the night here for ICC, starting to distance themselves here between Northeast as we close. And this one with 422 to play. Gandy's second free throw. That one off the mark. No good. Offensive rebound by Holland. Her shot partially blocked. Second time was blocked as well. Loose ball on the floor. Ends up in the hands of Pfeiffer. Turn around. Wild shot. No good. And then the Tigers lose it out of bounds. What about the hustle of ICC? 
here in the fourth quarter. There's a lot of hustle. There's no doubt about it. There's, they're fighting for the basketball, getting those second chance opportunities, third chance, fourth chance. They're doing a lot of right things on the offensive end right now. Wilson with the basketball on the right wing. Now he's going to work it back up top to Gandy. You're starting to see ICC be a little bit more patient offensively. As soon as I say that, Whitney Watkins drives inside. Pfeiffer with the rebound. The hook shot up in and that, good. That's a great set on the out-of-bounds play, though. As You're up 10 points, four minutes to go. We're going to get a good look on the offensive end. They do that. Miss the shot, get the offensive rebound, and take a 12-point lead. So ICC gets the steal. Wilson with it now. Picks up her dribble in trouble. Drops it off to Gandy. Gandy driving inside. Gets the defender up in the air and going to kick it back out to Wilson. And then we'll have a three-second violation. Yep. Well, Gandy was trying to get out of the paint that time and just couldn't quite do so. And right call that time by the referee, even though it's a rare call, but it was a right call. Hard call to make, too, especially when the basketball swinging around, rolling around, bodies hitting the floor. Hard to stay on top of that three-second call, but no doubt about it, Gandy was right there in the lane that long. Pfeiffer, excuse me. Yeah, 63-51 is the score. 3.37 to play in this one. And the MACJC, this thing is never, no longer in doubt as crazy things happen, especially when you get rivals together. Northeast with the basketball. This time they quickly get it down the floor. Quick three-pointers on its way. No good. Offensive rebound. Turnaround shot is up. It's no good. And there's Gandy with the rebound. You'd like to see ICC establish some patience on the offensive end now. 12-point game, three minutes to go to Bria Gandy's end to run the show as the point guard. Got that 30-second clock. You may as well use it, as we said a little while ago. And that's what they're going to do. Gandy's just going to yo-yo the ball up and down near midcourt, wait for the shot clock to get down to 10 seconds as ICC kind of clears out. Now 10 seconds on the shot clock. Gandy's going to dribble to her left, wants to work one-on-one. -on -one. Ball slapped away, gets it back now. And that's going to be a carry call. And... I don't know. I mean, the ball was slapped free. She went and got it and changed her direction. I think it was just the um, way the defender failed that kind of got the uh, call there. Well, you know, you could call somebody for palming the basketball every single yeah. possession. That time they decided they would do it. Either way, the turnover gives the ball back to the Tigers now. 2.55 to play. 63-51 ICC with the lead. Remind you to stay tuned. The guys game will be coming your way next here. On the ICC Sports Network, there's Gandy who had the steal, but then the ball just bounced off her knee, out of bounds, back to the Tigers on the baseline. She's all over the place. I mean, on the offensive end, she's able to roll around and get some open looks at only five foot three. Then on the defensive end, man, she just drives the opponent crazy. Being able to get in there, fight for rebounds, knock the ball away. She's always wherever the basketball is. That, that's the one thing you could say about Tabria Gandy. Freelo with the steal. They tried the entry pass. Freelo battling in the paint. Was able to get it. You see Coach Porter come up and put her hand up, say, let's slow this thing down a little bit and work this clock. Two and a half to play here. 63-51 ICC with the lead. Don't let this 12-point difference right now fool you folks. This has been a nip and tuck game all the way up to the fourth quarter. It's a two-point Northeast lead at the halftime break. Jumper from the key is off the mark. No good. Guess who gets the rebound? Yep, Tabria Gandy again. Quick three-pointer. Not the shot ICC wanted that time. And you kind of hear the coach say that, saying, no, that's not what we want. Tigers turn it over, though, on the other end. Coach Porter was very frustrated by that as Whitney Watkins launched a three with 24 seconds remaining on the shot clock. Especially after you get that offensive rebound. Man, that's just another bonus chance to run a lot of time off the clock. Now inside two minutes to play here in the fourth quarter. Tigers coming up and applying some pressure. Gandy in trouble. Are they going to say she stepped out of bounds? Well, and Tabria Gandy, she's looking for some help as all four other ladies are back around the block. She's standing at the half-court line by herself. She's in a double team, nowhere to go, and a little pressure forces her out of bounds. But somebody's got to come up and help the point guard out. And they're going to sub Gandy out of the contest. Norman will come in for ICC. 145 to play here. 63-51 is the score. Tigers, they've got to start scoring in a hurry. A quick three-pointer put up. That one's short, no good. Offensive rebound put back. No, but there's a foul on the Indians. So that's going to allow Haley Vick to get to the free throw line to try to cut this 10-point game with 139 to go while the clock is not running. A pair of substitutions coming in here for ICC. Burgess along with Pfeiffer into the contest. And the key part of what you just said, Jordan, is points with the clock stopped. Bonus Absolutely. here for uh, Northeast down the stretch. That, that's the thing here defensively if you're ICC is you, you've got, you got to know your, your cushion as a lead. You've, you've got a 10-point lead or 12-point lead. If they made both free throws, if they missed the first one, it would be a 10-point lead. But nonetheless, you don't want to give up points with the clock not running. 139 to play in the contest. ICC with a 63-51 lead. Second free throw is up in and good. 
That was Vic, and I believe we're going to have a timeout. Timeout on the floor. We're going to take the timeout with them and hear a few words from our sponsors. Full timeout. ICC leads at 63-52. Back with more right after this on the ICC Sports Network. This broadcast of ICC Athletics is being brought to you by Renaissance Bank, Little Caesars, Davis Ford, the Sonic of Fulton, Tupelo Coca-Cola Bottling Works, the Orthopedic Institute of North Mississippi, First American National Bank, the ICC BSU, your Itawama County Farm Bureau agent, Joey Cox, Cagle Eye Center, the ICC Foundation, the Bank of Oklahoma, and the ICC Alumni Association. At Itawama Community College, your education is our top priority. With a 20 to 1 student to teacher ratio, you will get the help that you need from your instructors. With three locations in Fulton, Tupelo, and Belden, ICC offers classes that will prepare you to enter almost any job field of your choice. Learn more about Wallet Hub's number one community college in Mississippi and the 25th best in the country by visiting iccms.edu or apply online at apply.iccms.edu. Itawama Community College, the best start here. And welcome back as we reset out of the timeout. 1.39 to play here, 63-52. ICC with the lead here, trying to close things out in the first of two games tonight. As the Lady Indians throw over the top of the press, and Wilson's going to dribble it out and work some of the clock here. Good job by Wilson there, just to come free, to get the ball inbounded, break the press now in a one-on-one. -on -one. Northeast has to decide if they want to foul or not down 11 with 1.30 to go. It looks like they're going to elect not to do so. Really surprised they didn't at least force ICC to go to the free throw line. They haven't been hitting the free throws well tonight. Normick goes inside. A lot of contact. No foul call, so they got the stop. Now here's the key. Get back on defense. Play them tough, but don't foul. Don't let them score with the clock not running. So coming up on one minute to play now, ICC with an 11-point advantage, 63-52. Little give-and-go offense, and ICC commits the foul. So good job by Northeast. They roll the dice. They don't start fouling early to put ICC on the line as ICC will now send in a substitution. Gandy back in. Norman will come out. So now, once again, Tigers have got to take advantage of these free throws. One could argue that the best defense for Northeast all night long would have been to foul ICC because the charity stripe has not been kind to the Lady Indians throughout the night. This is Dominique Caldwell at the line. She misses the front of a two-shot opportunity. Awaiting the second one here from Caldwell. A chance to make it a 10-point contest. It's up and bouncing around. No good. Pfeiffer secures the rebound. One minute to play now. ICC 63-52. There's a trap at midcourt. Ball is slapped free. And Gandy with the basketball leaves it off to Pfeiffer. Pfeiffer's layup is there. So that time you see Gandy gets trapped like she did a couple possessions ago. But that time you have some ladies go to help her. They get the basketball loose and it leads to a layup with Lamaya Pfeiffer. Also, I think Gandy bounced the basketball off the leg of the defender to get some, create some space. Three-point basket buried that time by Caldwell as that's her first three-pointer of the night. And a timeout taken now makes it a 65-55 contest. The ball just found its hands in the shooter that time. That's all it was, but the good thing is Indians still lead 10, 32 seconds to go. This timeout's on the floor. All you got to do is break the press a few times and see if Northeast wants to foul you and make you go to the charity stripe or if they're going to let you run the clock out. Stay tuned. At the conclusion of this game, we'll have our Renaissance Bank postgame report. We'll be selecting our Sonic star of the game and be looking over some Sonic stats as well. And then, of course, we'll have some uh, conversation of, uh, about the game as Jordan will break that one down for us. And then we'll hear from Coach Rick Collier between the games about the upcoming baseball season, possibly hear from ICC tennis coach Michael Metz about the upcoming season as well there uh, for our spring sports, which will be here before you know it, Jordan. It's here. It is. I mean, I, I was looking at the baseball and softball schedules today. And yeah. I, I mean, you, you and Lee Adams with, with the sports information department, you, you better get ready because it's here. Yeah, January 31st. It's here. It's here. So. Northeast is going to come out and go in the full court press. Looks like they're going to let to not foul, but just try to force ICC into a turnover. As Gandy sees three players around her, now gives the ball up to Keeley Wilson, and Wilson's going to have the basketball. 20 seconds now. This one all but over as ICC can hold it. Actually, let the shot clock run out here. There's about two seconds difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Wilson with it now, wanting to work one-on-one. -on -one. She's going to drive inside. She's hammered, and she'll go to the line to shoot two. Well, now you can start breathing a little bit easier, Jordan, as ICC leads it by 10. That foul is going to be the fifth 
called on Dominique Caldwell. And ICC willed themselves to victory tonight. This game changed at the seven-minute mark when Tikiara Newsom fouled out for Northeast. She was playing with four fouls. She was leading the team with 18 points on the night, I believe, and fouled out yep. with 6.45 to go. And from that point on, ICC has really been able to capitalize on her not being down there on the defensive end, but also Northeast has struggled to find any kind of rhythm offensively. Well, one thing Coach Porter's going to do with the Lady Indians tomorrow, and that's going to be shoot free throws. That first free throw, no good, waiting the second here for Wilson with 7.7 .7 left in the contest. Second free throw, that one good. As that'll do it. ICC leads it by 11. Quick three-pointer put up, it's off the mark, no good. Pfeiffer with the rebound and that's gonna do it. ICC with a big fourth quarter pulls away for the 66-55 victory in Jordan. We're gonna take a quick break, come back with the Renaissance Bank post-game report, ICC wins at 66-55. Back with more right after this on the ICC Sports Network. Ever since you got that license, you haven't stopped moving forward. Now that you're older and on the move, you need a safer place to keep your money. We get it. A student checking account frees you up with things like mobile check deposit to take care of that check from grandma without having to stop at a bank. Pay with your phone when you're out with friends and stop worrying about ATM fees. We'll pay you back for those. Worry about your future, not your money. And know that we'll stick with you, wherever you go. Renaissance Bank, understanding you. Member FDIC. The Car Hop Classic for just $2.99 is the perfect one-two punch of flavor and value. You Time, that. You need a trainer to help you eat the burger? Hey, stay out of this. Don't get in my head, man. There's barely room for me in there. Hurry in and try quarter pound double cheeseburger or six inch Philly plus tots for $2.99. My mom never let me eat this much cookie dough. What would she say if she saw you eating this big scoop cookie dough blast? I don't know, I ask her. Don't tell your father. <laughs> oh, naughty, naughty. <laughs> Hurry in and scoop up our new cookie dough treats. Try order ahead to get happy hour anytime. And welcome back to the Renaissance Bank post-game report. Renaissance Bank, understanding you, renaissancebank.com. Your final score, 66-55 ICC with an impressive fourth quarter, able to pull away for the win there. And uh, Jordan, your thoughts on the game tonight? Well, you know, I thought it was a tale of two halves, really. It looked like a lot of adjustments were made at the halftime break for ICC as they, they made a concerted effort down the stretch that they were going to get the ball out in transition. They were going to collapse on the defensive end. They were not going to allow anyone to beat them inside the paint. They were going to force Northeast to try to beat them from the three-point line. And Northeast was not able to consistently knock those shots down. Tabria Gandhi and Shamaria Overton, I thought, did an exceptional job, specifically down the, down the stretch in the fourth quarter, of pushing the basketball and finding the post players underneath the goal to really expand that lead. ICC led by three at the end of the third, led by seven at the seven-minute mark, and at one point led by 12 with about a minute to go. So you could really see down the stretch where depth and, and the amount of players that ICC had put on the floor really paid benefit. Absolutely. Now let's take a look at some of those Sonic stats, and let's start with Northeast. And also, as you give those stats, uh, be thinking about your uh, ICC Sonic star of the game. So Northeast falls to two and two and ten, ten on yep. the season, zero oh and two in division play. They were led in scoring by Tikiara Newsom, who had 18 total points and six rebounds. She was eight of 15 shooting from the floor, zero oh of one from the three-point line, and two of four from the free throw line. The problem was she fouled out with about six minutes left. She played every single minute to the 6.45 mark to go in the basketball game in which she fouled out at that point with 18 points. Also in double figures for Northeast was Dominique Caldwell. She had 13 points and four rebounds. Those 13 points off four of six shooting, one of those of three, and four of seven off the free throw line. Also in the starting lineup for Northeast was Chancey Jackson. She had six points and three rebounds. Haley Vick had three points and four rebounds, and Deshae McGloster had four points and four rebounds. Off the bench, only four other players got into the, pl into the column of playing the night for Northeast. Kimara Atterbury had six points and 14 minutes of play. Kathy Burst, three points and 22 minutes of play. Quintiana Webster had four points and 25 minutes of play, and checking in for just three minutes was Madeline Johnson. Overall, 15 of 26 from the field or from the floor in the first half. They were only six of 22 in the second half. So in total, 21 of 48 from the floor tonight for Northeast. There were two of four from the three-point line first half, one of six in the second half. So only three of 10 from the three-point line. 
the charity stripe was not very kind to either team. Northeast tonight, 10 of 17, so about 60% off the free throw line tonight for the Lady Tigers. They had 25 total rebounds, and this number's not going to be – okay, I see it now. The numbers were a little bit off-center. 27 rebounds for Northeast, 44 rebounds for ICC, wow. so they really were able to out-rebound them down the stretch. Flipping the page and looking at ICC, they were led in scoring by Keely Wilson. She was only 6 of 16 from the floor, but had 16 total points tonight in 36 minutes of action. Tabria Gandy, 14 points, 4 of 8 shooting. Whitney Watkins, 10 points on 4 of 11 shooting. That's a look at the ladies in double figures for the Lady Indians. Sarah Freelo drew the start, had 4 points. Zaire Burgess had one free throw made as she started at the 3-guard spot tonight. Also in the scoring column was Shamaria Overton, who had 11 minutes, and 11 very productive minutes, I would say, tonight for Overton, and had 5 points in those minutes. Lamaya Pfeiffer, 14 points, 7 of 10 shooting in her 15 minutes of action off the bench. Also getting in the scoring column off the bench was Mariah Holland with a bucket and Scarlett Guess with one point as well. Zuri Dunlap, Tamoya Brownlee, and Tatiana Norman also checked into the game tonight for the Indians. Absolutely. Well, Jordan, uh, who do you want to pick as your sonic star of the game? You know, I'm going to go with Tabria Gandhi. I, I thought you could really see a concerted effort from her there in the second half to where she took the team over. She, she really pushed the basketball out in transition and facilitated the offense. Not only did she have those 16 total points, but three assists to go along with that, nine rebounds, just a really good stat line tonight for the point guard. ICC improves to 10, no, oh, excuse me, 9 and 2, 2 and 0, oh, more importantly, in the North. The reason why that's so important, Jordan, the Women's North Division Champion this year will host the MACJC Tournament later on this season. Northeast falls to 2 and 10, 0 oh and 2 in North Division play. Well, we're going to take a break. We're about 18 minutes away from that first American National Bank opening tip between ICC and Northeast. Uh, the Tigers, 11 and 0 oh in the year, 1 and 0 oh in the North. ICC, 3 and 7, but on a two-game win streak, 0 oh and 1. And the North coming into tonight's nightcap. But before we do that, we're going to take and hear a few words from uh, Coach Rick Collier talking about the upcoming baseball season as well as Coach Michael Metz talking about the upcoming tennis season. We'll also hear from Madarius Hobson, who was named MACJC Player of the Week this past week in the league. Back with more right after this on the ICC Sports Network. Ever since you got that license, you haven't stopped moving forward. Now that you're older and on the move, you need a safer place to keep your money. We get it. A student checking account frees you up with things like mobile check deposit to take care of that check from grandma without having to stop at a bank. Pay with your phone when you're out with friends and stop worrying about ATM fees. We'll pay you back for those. Worry about your future, not your money. And know that we'll stick with you wherever you go. Renaissance Bank. Understanding you. Member FDIC, 